start this um, informational meeting. Um, uh, the, um, as you may know, the City Council took a first reading on my proposed water and rate um, structure. And, uh, and then at the last meeting, we, they postponed consideration on second reading um, and asked that I hold another informational meeting just for other folks who had questions, uh, particularly folks in the business community. Um, so I'm going to basically do a quick presentation to kind of walk you through. Um, and then I'm here to answer questions, to get feedback, um, and, uh, and you know, collect more information, which is something I've been trying to do throughout the process. So we'll go to the first slide. Um, just to briefly give you a quick um, history of the, uh, of, of, the, of the process, back in November of 2014, we did a reorganization of city government. That power came to me under the new charter. Um, and and I, I made the decision to transfer the rate setting authority um, from the former Board of Public Works to the mayor and the city council. Um, as some of you may know, the Board of Public Works, which was an appointed board, um, used to make that decision on an annual basis. Um, and that was the process that was used. So for the first time last fiscal year, um, that power was shifted to uh, the mayor um, uh, making that recommendation, working with the DPW, and then seeking the council's approval. So in March of 2015, um, I submitted a proposed water and sewer rate uh, for 2016 um, using our then existing flat rate system uh, with no changes to any of the fixed rate fees. Um, at that point, I proposed going from 558 to 574 uh, per CCF on water, and then the proposed increase on sewer was from 609 um, uh, based on 100% of water consumption to 627. Um, just looking at that rate structure, that was a 2.88% that was a, a increase in the rates, in both of those rates for all water and sewer customers. We actually had a hearing in this room. Um, the newly formed uh, City Council Committee on Public Works held a very well attended um, hearing in this room and I see some of the folks that were at that hearing including some counselors um, and we got a lot of feedback from people. Um, we heard a lot of feedback um, that concerns about the, the way that the increases fell um, on different uh, users in the city. Um, we particularly heard from folks who are retired um, who were, um, in some cases, uh, living alone in a small house. We heard people talk about how um, they had attempted to um, conserve water and they had implemented their own conservation methods, um, but there was really no incentive for conservation built into our rates. Um, and then we just talked about how the rate structure, this sort of flat rate structure, um, you know, was basically fell the same on the smallest users as it did the largest users. So based on that feedback, um, I made the decision because we were we were basically trying to make this decision in a short time frame in the middle of a budget in the middle of a year, uh, because of when the change took place, to basically recommend that we freeze the rates um, and not increase the rates for 2016. So we basically kept the rates the same um, and did not increase them last fiscal year. That was actually beneficial for two reasons. First, um, it allowed me to go back, and I promised at the time that I would take the information that I gathered at that hearing and do research on um, both alternate rate structures. I would look into things like conservation incentives. I would look at low-income rate relief and a number of other um, issues uh, that, that came up at that hearing. The other thing that it allowed, allowed us to do was it allowed the DPW to finalize and hold some public meetings on um, two comprehensive asset management plans that they had been developing. First was for uh, the water uh, system, um, and the second was for the uh, wastewater system, the sewer system. Um, because a lot of the things we're talking about when we talk about water and sewer rates are driven by um, significant capital needs over the next uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So we froze the rates uh, from 20, uh, at FY 2016 rates. You can go to the next slide. Um, and then one of the things we did, in addition to the DPW finalizing their plans and holding their hearings, uh, we commissioned a water rate study, um, and we brought in um, some outside experts, uh, Woodcock and Associates, and actually Chris Woodcock is here with us this afternoon. He's a, uh, he is one of the recognized experts in this field in New England, um, and, as well as teaming with a partner they have, Raftelis Financial Consultants. 
Um, and we basically worked with them uh, to assess the current rate structure, um, talk about all the various permutations we could look at in terms of alternative rate structures, and then also look at what our, um, what our capital needs are, again, hearkening back to those two capital plans, uh, to figure out how we could design a rate structure that would allow us to pay for uh, those projects. So if you go to the next slide. Um, the objectives that we, that we set in trying to come up with a new structure um, were these four. Trying to promote conservation. Uh, we wanted to find a way that we could provide assistance to economically disadvantaged customers. Um, we wanted to look at is there a way to improve equity among customer types. And again, that's the concept of the small, small user uh, versus the large user um, because they do not have the same impact on the system. Uh, they may use different amount. They use different amounts of water. They also have a, a a bigger impact in terms of the infrastructure impact as well, and then enhancing <coughs> revenue stability. Um, the current flat rate system that we have pretty much relies entirely on consumption. About ninety nine point five percent of the revenue is on consumption. Uh, we had very low fixed fees that had never really been uh, looked at over time, and those represented again less about 0.5 uh, percent of the rate of the revenue that we were looking at. So enhancing revenue stability um, moving forward to account for fluctuations in consumption was another objective. Next slide. We also, uh, you know, highlighted some of our key uh, water capital needs, and these are these are needs that we talked about last year as well. We have several uh, major water line replacement projects that we have projected um, over the next five years. Um, you know, this is sort of an overview of some of the ones that we have um, in design and construction. Um, some of you have heard about Hinkley Street, which is a major project, uh, and then we've got other projects that are in design. We also, as part of our uh, water system because we have a system that relies on uh, reservoirs. We have two dams, uh, uh, the Ryan uh, Reservoir Dam and the West Waitley Reservoir Dam that are in need of repairs and so we're planning for that work that's projected out in 2021. Um, that's about 3.5 million. So that's the water side. Uh, sewer side, um, the next slide, um, we have some we have some sewer line replacement and some work again oftentimes it takes place at the same time we're doing water line replacement but the biggest issue is our wastewater treatment plant uh, which is located on Hockenham Road uh, which was constructed in 1976 and um, and there are a number of um, upgrades that need to happen to that uh, plant both for safety for worker safety as well as to keep it in compliance um, with, the, with the requirements that we have for treating our water before it is discharged into the uh, Connecticut River, because that's what happens to our wastewater. It's treated, um, and then it gets discharged uh, under a discharge permit that we have with EPA and DEP. So, oh, oh sorry, man. Uh, so these are some of the projects uh, that we have, that we are looking to try to accomplish, um, and you can kind of see them broken out um, into various component parts, but again, about a total of $30 million worth of projects that we need to do at that plant. So those are the big capital needs in water and sewer. So when we talk about building a rate structure, um, we're trying to build a rate structure not only to pay for the current operating costs, not only to pay for the current debt service that we have on the plant, um, but also to look forward to these future capital needs and be able to have the revenue uh, to carry future debt. You can go to the next slide. Um, so when you take when you take those um, when you take those projects and you sort of plot them on a graph, you can kind of see that it's sort of an unsteady, um, uneven uh, list. And, and the uh, the dark blue is the sewer, the light blue is the water system, and you can kind of see where those plot out on a on a future chart. So one of the things we tried to do is build a is and why don't we just go to the next slide is come up with a financial plan for water where we're looking at not only our operating expenses, and again, that's the, that's the expenses to run the water system, the employees, the health insurance, the, um, the electricity uh, to run, run those systems, um, all of the um, uh, maintenance items, uh, the, 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 the pipe, all the things that we're, we're purchasing uh, that go into running the, um, the water system. Um, then we've got existing debt service that we're carrying. 
um, including the, uh, the $28 million uh, water filtration plant that we were mandated to build in 2008. We're carrying that debt service. Um, and then we've got sort of ongoing pay-as-you-go cash capital projects that happen every year. And so we're trying to chart our revenue so that, it, uh, so that it, it's gonna, we're going to have the amount of revenue to cover all those uh, various uh, needs as part of an overall financial plan. If you go to the next slide, same for sewer. Um, again, same thing. Try, in some ways, though, here, because we have these bigger projects, we're trying to be able to ramp up to have the capacity uh, to handle those um, to handle those uh, funds. And we do have what's called a capital stabilization account, which is where we also put uh, basically a savings account to also try to save up funds for these big projects as well to help um, to help uh, diffuse some of the borrowing costs when we go to when we go to implement them. Go to the next slide. So under the current water structure, and this is the flat rate structure uh, that we've had in place for decades, all customers are, cha are charged the same volumetric rate regardless of type, size, or the amount of water used. Um, again, as I referenced, there's been a very small <coughs> fixed charge that's, ass that's assessed per bill, uh, which recovers very little of the water's uh, fixed costs. Um, for example, for our smallest users, that's a dollar a quarter. Um, uh, which uh, you know is a very small amount relative to what it costs to um, operate the system, um, whether someone turns on the faucet or not. We have fixed costs no matter what happens. Um, we also do not have um, what's referred to as a private fire protection charge, which is a very um, uh, is something that's common in other cities, um, and this is a, uh, a a charge on folks who have a separate fire protection line. Um, that feeds, in many cases, a, a, a sprinkler system. Um, and that's an unmetered line that's providing an on-demand amount of water. And, it, and it's only something that you know, a couple of hundred, 250 customers out of 10,000 customers have. Um, and so many communities look at a charge for that service. And then again, just re recalling what the current water rate is, flat rate, $5.58 per CCF. And that's 100 cubic feet. Uh, that, for whatever reason, that's the terminology that's used uh, for how we measure water. Um, and so you'll see that CCF number, but that's cubic feet um, in times 100. Next slide. Sewer rate stru structure. The current sewer rate structure is basically all customers are charged for sewer services based on 100% of their metered water consumption, um, except for a small number of large industrial users. So if you uh, you know, however many CCFs you use in water, we basically multiplied that by the sewer charge to come up with what your, what your sewer rate would be that year. And so under the current six, uh, rate, under the 2016 rate, it's $6.08 per CCF of, of either metered water consumption or 100% of your, of your um, in some cases, I, I mentioned there's large industrial customers. We only have five that have a, a water, a sewer meter, and in that case, we bill them on 100% of their sewer, um, what they're putting into the sewer system. Next slide. Um, he's doing an update. Oh. We have a little system oh, update happening. There, there we go. Um, so again, in terms of key recommendations that, that have come to us in terms of what we're trying to do, um, the key recommendations that we've tried to incorporate um, as, we've, as we've put forward this new structure, provide economic assistance to customers who qualify uh, based on our current tax exemption criteria. We currently have programs for people that uh, pay property tax in the city. Um, it's set up under state law. Um, and it allows people who can demonstrate that they meet certain low-income criteria um, that they are allowed a, a certain amount of exemption on their property tax. We also have a similar a corollary exemption on the Community Preservation Act surcharge. Uh, that's also available. And so, um, so we're looking to try to provide something similar for uh, residents who may be struggling economically uh, to be able to afford their utility bill. The other thing is we're looking to create a two-tier water structure for small meters. Um, 
Uh, we want to look at implementing a larger fixed charge. Again, I mentioned the fixed charge currently um, really only represents a, a, a small percentage of our uh, revenue. And so we want to make sure that that's a little bit a larger number um, as part of our overall revenue sustainability. Um, creating this new fire protection charge. And then the other change, uh, which is something we heard, uh, we heard a lot actually at, at last year's hearing, um, was instead of billing people based on 100% of their water consumption, uh, billing at 80% of their water consumption. Because what we heard in a lot of cases is people are, you know, using water for things like irrigation. They're using it for, uh, you know, in some, in some cases they may um, uh, have swimming pools. They may be using it for other things than actually going right back into the sewer. Um, and so to say that every drop of water that you consume is going right back into the sewer is not always accurate. So that's why we're trying to use 80% instead of 100% um, to, try to, to try to account for that. Um, because that's something that we've heard, we've actually heard it for many years. Um, some smaller communities offer people a separate meter um, for those kinds of activities. Um, but that's something that's been difficult, or it's administratively it's difficult in a in a city our size. So what we're trying to do is um, is offer this as a way to account for that. So those are the key recommendations that go into uh, the proposal that I put forward. Let's go to the next slide. So the um, water and sewer rates that are now currently before city council, um, and you'll see some little lines through uh, through the first set of numbers. Um, because I made an initial uh, recommendation which the council adopted and then more recently I've revised that down a little bit uh, based on the feedback that I've gotten um, at the several hearings as well as from one-on-one -on -one, uh, meetings with people and feedback with people and meetings with the Chamber of Commerce. So the way the rate structure um, is set up is there's basically two customer uh, groups. There's customers with a one-inch meter or smaller um, and then there's customers with a meter larger than one inch. Um, and within the uh, one inch meter or smaller uh, customer class, there's two tiers of consumption. So um, tier one basically means for the first 16 CCF um, or, or 1,600 cubic feet of water that a one inch meter or smaller customer cons consumes, they would <clears throat> pay $4.36 per CCF. After that, um, from 1601 you know, uh, cubic feet, um, they pay 582 per cubic feet. Now it's important because we've had a lot of people tripped up by this because people think if they use over 16, then they have to calculate their entire bill by that rate. We've gotten so many calls from people saying, you know, I'm, I, it, uh, my number's coming out differently than the calculator. But really, um, it's sort of two calculations. The first 16 CCF is at this 436, and then everything above 16 CCF is 582. So it's kind of a blended rate, and we'll talk more about why that 16 CCF conservation rate, um, how we develop that and what that's based on. Then you go to the customers uh, with meters larger than one inch, um, and that rate is a single rate, $5.72 uh, per CCF, which I, I always try to note to people is actually lower than the tier two consumption rate um, on, the, um, on, the, on the one inch meter or smaller. So, you know, uh, 436 going up to 582, and then the larger meter customers, $5.72 per CCF. Sewer rate, um, that rate is going to, the proposal is $7.52 based on 80% of metered water consumption. So basically, um, a customer would look at their water bill, and the, and the calculator online does this for you automatically, um, and if you use, you know, 16, um, or, you know, if you use 10 CCF of water, because I'm not a, a math whiz, uh, 10 CCF of water, um, you'd be multiplying 8 CCF times the $7.52 to account for 80% of the water consumption. Um, so again, it's trying to build in that 80% that calculation. So those are the um, volumetric rates. Those are the ones that I've actually submitted to the city council. Those are the ones that are before uh, the city council right now. They've had a first reading. Um, and then you can move to the next slide. So the conservation rate, because we've gotten a lot of questions about how we develop the conservation rate, um, and, and where do we get this 16 CCF number? 
Um, it's actually based on uh, goals, consumption goals that have been set by DEP, um, and basically household you know, water use, which is the, the sort of the, lo the lion's share in terms of day-to-day -day, um, use, um, 65 gallons per day, or per person per day, is considered the conservation goal for people. Um, and so by you t doing a calculation, and I, I won't go through, I, mean, I can go through it with you, the average household size is actually 2.07 uh, people. Um, so we then multiply the 65 gallons <coughs> times 2.07 average household size uh, to get 134.6 gallons per day in an average household. So that's kind of the goal um, for what the DEP uh, considers to be um, a conservation uh, a conservative use of water, household water. Um, then you convert it to the 100 cubic feet, which brings you to the um, 18 uh, cubic feet, um, and, and then uh, times 90 days, which is a quarter, because we bill in quarters, uh, brings you to 16, uh, 20 cubic feet per quarter, and then you have to convert it to CCF, so that's where we get the 16 CCF per quarter. So that's how we arrived at the conservation rate. Um, it's based on uh, an accepted standard, and we're basically applying it to our average household size here in Northampton. Um, and so that's how we built that conservation rate. You know, there's some information here that DEP puts out. Um, you know, one CCF is 748 gallons of, of water, and then it sort of shows, you know, how most people use uh, water, including uh, leaks, which is a, a major source of water loss as well. So that's the conservation rate. Next slide. So now the quarterly fixed charges. Um, these are the quarterly fixed charges. These are, uh, these are the charges that we'll be implementing administratively uh, through the DPW. Um, and right now, we have uh, meter uh, quarterly fixed charges on everyone's bill now. These are the ones that we're proposing to implement, again, to kind of update those um, those dollar rates. So if you have a, f a 5 8 inch uh, meter uh, or, or line, you'll be assessed, in addition to your volumetric rate, this $12.64 uh, charge. And it goes up uh, depending on the size of your line. Um, and again, we've had these quarterly rates in place. Uh, what we're doing now is really trying to update them. Um, and, and I don't know when they've been updated last. Uh, we, we don't really have any record Never. in the last 10 or Never. Never. <laughs> I can't imagine they were lower than a dollar a quarter. Uh, so, um, you know, for the 5 8 user. So this is really the first time we've looked at it. Um, this, is where we've, this is where we're working in the affordability program. And what we're going to do is um, customers who currently qualify for the low-income exemption on real estate or, or the CPA um, will be automatically exempted from this fixed charge on their bill. Um, and so not only is it going to reduce their bill by the fixed charge, but it really just puts the entire bill based on consumption only. Um, and so, and again, this is a very common, uh, a common method that's used. Many of you may be familiar with the uh, National Grid has a, uh, a rebate program for low income. You can apply. Um, and basically what they do is they exempt people from their fixed, those many fixed fees that you pay on your electric bill um, and really just focus on electric consumption. So that's what we're proposing for the fixed charges. And then this is where the affordability program comes in, and we'll show you how that plays out uh, later. Next is the, um, now it's just, we want to just kind of look at the customer breakdown because we, we, we talked about the one inch or larger um, and the, or the one inch um, or less, and then the larger than one inch. This kind of just gives you the universe of you know the 8,524 customers um, and how that breaks down um, in terms of the different meter sizes. Um, taking that one step further and applying it to our model, let's go to the next slide. Um, this is the breakdown based on those customer classes that I described. So the one inch meter or smaller, that's this, that's this 95% of customers, or about 8,135 customers versus what we're calling the large, uh, larger than one inch uh, customers, uh, 389 of them, who represent 5% of, um, of the customer class. So that's sort of the distribution of how the customers break out uh, based on this uh, two, uh, two customer sizes that we have. Now we will take a look at that same grouping by consumption. Um, so again, 
the, um, the uh, one inch or larger um, is this dark blue as it was before, um, uh, but instead of being 5% of the customer, it's 5% of the customer base, but you can see they're consuming 53% of the water. Um, so 53% of the water is being consumed by that 5% of the customer base. This is the remaining 47 that's the less than one inch, and we just kind of broke it down uh, for you by, you know, we broke it down by the 16 CCF and then above 16 CCF, but that just sort of shows you how it breaks down that way. But that's sort of the distribution of the customer base. Um, next slide. This is the uh, proposed fire, uh, quarterly fire protection charge. Um, this is, again, an administrative fee. Um, this is something that, as I've mentioned before, is, uh, is prevalent in many other cities, um, you know, including nearby Springfield uh, and Worcester. Boston actually has a daily uh, fire protection charge, um, and many other cities around um, the Commonwealth and around the country have it. Um, it's basically, again, as I described earlier, it's a, it's a, it's a quarterly charge um, that is for the unmetered separate fire line that a certain number of property owners have. I mentioned I think there's 252 of them um, in the city. And, uh, and so this is a proposal to, again, try to look at uh, people's use of the infrastructure and their share of the infrastructure and try to account for the fact that there are some users who are utilizing additional infrastructure as part of their uh, water use and their property um, that currently is being paid for by all of the customers. And so this is an attempt to try to capture some of that cost uh, for those particular users who are getting that specific benefit. Next slide. So customer impacts. So this is a quarterly bill comparison. Um, and, uh, and this chart basically, just to show you what is across the top, this is that CCF number. This is the size of the water line or the meter. Um, this shows you their current uh, quarterly uh, bill for water. Uh, this shows you the proposed 2017 under the newly revised rates. This shows you the dollar change. Um, and then we show what it would be if you're eligible for the income discount, um, uh, which we described earlier. So uh, taking a look across, you know, if you're a smaller, you know, the three CCF user, um, you're going to see a, a, an increase, which is primarily because of the change in the fixed fee going from a, do a dollar to twelve dollars. Um, but with the income discount, um, if someone was that small a user and they qualified for the income discount, they would actually uh, see some relief because of the, the discounting of that fixed fee. Um, we're using the typical residential customer 12 CCF, uh, which is approximately 9,000 gallons a quarter. Um, again, typical, the 5 8 inch line. We're showing that right now they'd be paying $67.96 um, in 2017. Um, again, modeling the same average cons quarterly consumption, um, $64.96, or about a $3 difference. Again, for somebody who's a low-income person, um, this they would be eligible for the discount of the fixed fee, so they would be paying about $15.64 less. But again, they would have to meet uh, the requirements of that. And then you can kind of see how it plays out um, different structures. These numbers were obviously different when I made my original proposal, um, but then what happened uh, in response to the concerns we were hearing about how the combination of the fixed rates and the volumetric rates were affecting particularly larger users' bills, we lowered all of the volumetric rates um, proportionally. Um, and so this is the current result of the quarterly bill comparison when we do that. The next one is the sewer uh, impact. Um, same exercise, although in this one we have to calculate the 80% of, uh, of CCF, so you take their full water consumption and then you calculate the 80% of CCF um, and uh, you know, size of meter. Uh, th this is what the bill for the average uh, typical customer 12 CCF, uh, 7296. Um, FY 2017, 7219 or 0.77. And just to let you know how we, you know how we came up with a quarterly bill comparison, we took the last full year of water use, which was FY 2015, because we're right now in the middle of 2016, so we took the last uh, full year of water use, and then we uh, averaged out what it was per quarter, because we didn't want to just pick one quarter, because that may have been a, you know, 
a summer when people were watering their gardens, or it may have been a, 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 a particularly wet time of year. We, don't, we wanted to make sure we had a full use. So when you're looking at these numbers, I keep telling people, uh, this is a model. This doesn't mean that everybody's bill is going to go down. It just means that a person that was using that much water on average paid that much last year, and this is what they'll pay next year. But this kind of shows you um, how it plays out um, across the various uh, customer classes. And again, on the sewer side, you know, you see the impact of the 80% shift because um, you know even larger users at a four-inch uh, uh, line that's paying, you know, the um, the the four inch uh, fee and and using you know water at the six thousand uh, or, or paying six thousand dollars for sewer, even they would see a reduction primarily because of that shift to the eighty percent as opposed to one hundred percent of sewer. So this is just the combined impacts. It's basically merging the two together and uh, and showing what the combined impacts again. Again, over off here to the right would only be people that were that qualified for the income discount. Uh, this is what their um, impacts would be, and then the change is shown here um, in the middle in terms of uh, in terms of what would happen um, uh, estimated based on their annual usage and quarterly usage. So that's the impacts. Um, uh, that the that the new rate structure, the revised rate structure, would have. So let's go to the next slide. This was a slide that we did before, and I know the Gazette has expanded upon it and shown you know lots of other um, examples. They've uh, and we've gotten lots of calls from people, uh, not just businesses. We've gotten calls from multifamily homeowners um, who've asked us to help them do the calculation. Um, and so this is just kind of a cross section of. Of different uh, businesses, um, you know, in and around sort of well-known locally owned businesses, um, everything from you know Cooper's Corner or Free Advertising Rich for you, um, you know, Faces, uh, Fairfield Inn, um, Florence Barbershop, Joe's Cafe, you know, Stop and Shop, Sylvester's, Thorin's Marketplace, um, and this is again the combined. Um, and, and it talks about, you know, here's the, this shows you what their average quarterly consumption was in, uh, in 2015, basically. Um, and this shows you what the differences would be in terms of the impact uh, on a quarterly basis for those businesses. Again, hypothetically using, you know, quarterly, we, don't, we can't predict what, how much water they're going to use or not going to use in FY17, but we can at least model what the difference would have been under this structure. So those are the um, so those are some combined impacts. Next slide. I have mentioned the calculator several times. Uh, we 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 set that up in uh, February, uh, and we basically have a calculator that if you take your water bill and you put in your meter number and you put in um, the amount uh, the, the cubic feet of water you used on your last quarter, um, you can check whether you know the size. You can check whether you have sewer or not, and it will basically run a uh, consumption formula for you to again model the same thing that we're modeling to give people um, a sense of um, of what their bill impact might be. So that's the water and sewer bill calculator. Next slide. Um, this is just a report that I that I referenced um, in the other hearings. Uh, Massachusetts water infrastructure toward financial sustainability. It was a 2012 report issued um, by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, pulled out a couple of uh, quotes from it that I think are really important. Um, for a service that has a very high societal value, where failures will cause great inconvenience, loss of business, and jeopardize the public health, we often uh, fail to pay enough for the service. Ironically, many of us see the value in high monthly fees for internet or cable service. Um, as a point of comparison, water rates on an annualized basis compare to the following rates for other commonly used utilities and this is a chart that they actually took from Kiplinger's, although it's uh, May of 2009. So the the uh, my cell phone bill, might, your cell phone bills might be a little higher than 50 to 60 dollars. But I think it sort of shows you, um, as a percentage of median household income, you know, people are paying 0.52 percent on water, 0.75 percent on sewer, um, but you know, paying more on terms of for cell phones, for cable TV, uh, and then for electricity and other utilities. So. 
Um, and then basically they, they talked about some surveys that were done nationally about the value of water. 69% uh, of those polled agreed with the statement, I generally take my access to clean water for granted. And then a full 95% of American voters polled in the same survey value water over any other service they receive, including heat and electricity. So that's just sort of a bigger perspective as we're talking about one utility um, sometimes we lose track of all the other utilities um, that we pay for um, and, and that are often going up at much higher rates than, um, than the water and sewer utility. I think that may be the last slide. Um, and so basically, I wanted to go through that. We'll keep it up there in case people have questions. And I just will open up the floor to people that have questions or comments. And again, I have uh, Chris uh, Woodcock, who's here from Woodcock and Associates, um, who can also help answer questions that people have. Uh, but basically, I just want to get feedback uh, from people, questions that you have. Um, and that's the purpose of the meeting. Yeah? How do you tell what size water line you have? What's that? Bill? Is it listed on the bill? It's, it's yes, it is. It's currently on the bill. You're currently paying a charge based on the size of your water line. Okay. Um, you've been paying it for, for, for a long, long time. So, uh, Bob, and then... It is so refreshing to hear a team which has taken a thoughtful approach to this very complex problem. And I completely support the investment in our infrastructure, just not a problem at all. Mm -hmm. My concern is a couple of different things. I, so if you look at those charts, mm -hmm. and you're an, an, like any of us in this room as people, yep. our bills can go down. S well, slightly, I very slightly. A little bit, yeah. a little bit. Negligibly. Yeah. Yeah. Slightly. But, yes. yeah. yep. but we we're paying for all this investment in mm -hmm. infrastructure. So, and my suspicion is that that's being born in several ways. I know, because nowhere in these calculations were the fire protection charge. Mm -hmm. And that's going to hit two our big, two our, our, yeah. who are big property owners, mm -hmm. various sorts. Yep. And that's not part of what's before the city council. That's correct. And so one question I have is about how much you're hoping to raise from those fees. And you don't have to answer it now, but that's my yeah. real concern, because that really hits Florence, Smith College, mm -hmm. um, and a second corollary of that is whatever it is, I think having been on the stormwater committee, that the city should also pay. We are. Those fees. Yeah, we, we will. For you, which one? Does, okay. We, do. we will we'll pay. Okay. okay. We'll pay these but increases. But so that's so, pay, I don't yeah. fight. Yeah. I, I think it's great to have yeah. all this information. You probably yep. provide a lot of information and shown a lot of thought. <clears throat> but who's paying for the new expenses? Well, so, <laughs> I, so but let me answer that question. I mean, one of the issues that you're seeing here is we're switching to a, a new formula. So this is, a, it's really a one-year phenomenon. So what's happening is we're switching from a flat rate system right. to a tiered rate system. So, uh, but going forward, every increase will be born, will be, will be equally spread. Um, now, one could argue that the old system, the smaller users were paying a disproportionate share of the system for the last 20 or 30 years. We're now switching to a system that has more equity built into it. So there is a one-year system. I mean, it's the same. You know, at the state level, if you change a funding formula, um, somebody's going to be impacted differently than the other. So you're seeing now a one-year change. And again, my previous rate structure, um, there weren't decreases. There was sort of moderate increases. But what I've tried to do is lower the rates, including on the highest users. So, you know, for people who are saying that this is basically letting off the small users from investing, it's really not true. For one year, uh, they are going to have less of an investment because of the switch to the new tiered rate system. But I would argue and they've they, been paying a disproportionate investment. Um, if you're thinking about this versus you know the size of the users, the size of their impact on the infrastructure. I mean, somebody you know, Mrs. Kostick over here, who spoke very passionately at the last hearing and and um, and has been <coughs> quoted in the newspaper. I mean, her impact on the infrastructure um, is much smaller than our largest users. Yet she's paying, she has been paying uh, the same over all these years. So, I mean, so it's the phenomenon of switching from one flat rate system to a tiered system that's going to be a one year phenomenon. 
and then you're going to see, you know, next year if there's an increase or if there's not an increase, it's all going to move equally. So how much do you think the fire protection charge it will bring in a year? The fire protection charge we estimate between eighty and ninety thousand dollars. It's okay. not a, it's not like millions and millions right. of dollars. Right. But again, as I said before, part of what we're trying to build into this process is, um, you know, assigning some fiscal responsibility for. Uh, certain users that have an impact on the system that's different from other users. Again, if somebody who has a who doesn't have a fire protection system um, has a different impact, you know, we're providing a a water supply system. We've designed you know our water supply system to be able to not only provide the water to these um, uh, facilities, but also in some cases on demand, unmetered, high pressure water. Um, which allows them to be able to operate these um, these systems, and that it's not free. Right. It's not without a cost. Right now, the entire system is subsidizing that part of the infrastructure. What I'm saying is, I'm not asking them to pay for all of it. We're just trying to capture some of that um, in this fire service charge. So that so, would be so my. So that's answer. about eighty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's about one yep. percent of what the total water budget is. Is that right? No, the water budget's about six million. Uh, dollars, uh, one and a half percent, yeah, maybe, half. maybe. Yeah. okay. Yep, All right. yep, exactly. So it's not a, again, we're trying to, when we talk about equity, and I know that some people assign different meanings to that, we're really talking about looking at all the customers, looking at the infrastructure, and you know, uh, some people are using a bigger share of the infrastructure, uh, and so that's why we're trying to at least account for that in the structure. So that's my answer to that. Yes, it's Peter. not like a fire suppression system is a luxury. It's not like it's a swimming pool. The, code, the city code is demanding that certain types in of in some cases have, it is. Yeah, have, have these yep. uh, these sprinkler systems. Well, actually, not the city code. It's the state the fire state code. code. I have a building inspector here, okay. a former building but inspector. The state. State. Yeah, Where it's, they, these people are doing it because of whatever the circumstances are. The hotel that's or correct. Or and uh, but it's not mandatory that they be connected to the city's water system. That's not a mandatory thing. Well, I, I know you're laughing, but there are chemical yeah. systems that people use. There are some businesses that use wells. That I mean, so I'm just saying that you're saying that it's mandatory, but it's not mandatory that they be connected to the city's mm -hmm. water supply. Um, so that's just the only thing I, I have to add because it's true. Um, it, you know, and that's sort of the definition in terms of a fee. If we're doing something that's mandatory, that you have no choice, and then we're charging you a fee. Um, so it's a little bit different than that. Right. Um, you do have the opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to do a chemical fire suppression system, um, and uh, you know, I think those are allowed, Tony, under the code. Under certain circumstances. Yeah. 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 What, exactly. what circumstances? So, so it is, yeah. You, you can, can do like that for a financial yeah. system. Or yeah. Something. Right. I don't think you can do it for a Yeah. Well. But I mean, I get your I get your point. I do understand that it's that, that it's a greater good. It's I understand the public, and and it also has an impact on your insurance if you have that system. If you don't have that system, you know, you, it, it has an impact in a lot of different. I'm saying to the insurance guy. Sorry, Peter. But you understand that when you can get your payback is about hundred fifty. I get it. I get it. Um, it's like my daughter's, you know, driver ed class. Right. I'll get that back in a, about 50 years. Um, so, so that's sort of the rationale on a, on a public policy level. But, but this is good to hear. I mean, this is good for me to have in terms of feedback about that particular charge. Yes, Wes. You said that it's not required, and that's that's good to know. But it's also not required that I mean, from this, this you pass out of one of the meetings. This five percent. Yep. The biggest users that are contributing, you said 53% of usage, but that's also 53% of the revenues, right? In some cases, okay, yeah. Okay, and yeah. probably more now it's a, it's that, that it's bit. actually lopsided towards the larger users, right? Not really that much. It's about Someone with a large meter about, pays more, right? It's about 57% when we run the numbers. So, so, so it's almost yeah. it's over half, right? So because... No, 53% contributing 57% of the revenue. That's what I'm saying. Is it's over half. <laughs> Right. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yeah, because an Ansel system or a fire suppression system, you said that that's not required. It's yep. also not required that these five percent, that minority, stays in the city. So do does anywhere in your projections or the plan involve people taking conservation measures or businesses changing or doing something different that's going to cause? I mean, if five percent is producing over half the revenues, and someone makes a serious change, moves, leaves, mm -hmm. or just changes how they do something, mm -hmm. right? 
you're going to see a drastic well, reduction gonna, in revenue. Well, they're going to see benefit from the conservation measures. I mean, they are, that's one of the. Th I mean, really, on being in a revenue deficit. Though, when right? I, but no, on the, the on the business side, on the business side of things, um, you know, I know we heard from our friends at Coca Cola. They they talked to me about how they've reduced their consumption, their usage by 13 percent. So they've just given themselves a 13 percent discount based on changing their operational. Uh, actions and the things that they're doing. It's very difficult to do a consumption rate for a commercial because not all commercial users are using water at the same rate, really. And even, you know, when you look at the, most of the businesses are not really seeing larger increases. It's really just a subset of users that are high water users. So, That's and I actually, I'd love to defer to Chris Woodcock on this because he can talk about it as well um, and, and talk about this issue of conservation at the larger size. But, you know, in terms of you know, businesses leaving, I guess what I would say to you on that is, I would hope that businesses are looking at not just their water and sewer bill, they're looking at a range of their operating costs and what it costs to operate in Northampton. You know, somebody suggested to me that people are gonna to move to Holyoke because they have cheaper water, or they're gonna to move to Westfield because they have cheaper water. Well, the tax rate in Holyoke is $39.86 per thousand which is the highest commercial tax rate in Massachusetts. So if you want to go get, if you want to go save a couple hundred dollars on your water bill and move to Holyoke, get ready to pay, and Eric's here, he can talk to you about the difference in the tax bill, what the tax bill will be in Holyoke. Westfield, yeah, they have lower uh, infrastructure, uh, water and rate, sewer rates, but their uh, tax rate is, uh, I think it's like 28%. Um, it's definitely up in that higher stratosphere. So businesses have to look at all those different uh, costs as well. Costs of energy, costs of electricity. Um, and so those are just all the things that I hope people would factor in. I realize we're talking about water sewer rates, so that's what we're all focused in at. But there's also other costs. Um, and I would also say there's intangibles about being in Northampton, and there's reasons why people are located in Northampton um, other than just the cost of water. But I'm mindful that this has an impact, and that's why I'm trying to listen to people. It's why I've tried to, I met with the chamber back in February. It's why I've been trying to put forward all this information as early as January. And it's why whenever someone calls my staff, we're trying to run the numbers for them to help them understand what the impact is. Yes? As we approach April 15th, which is tax day. Yes. Is anybody I think it's 18. I, I knew you were going to say that, Fred. I knew, yeah. <laughs> Has anybody considered that for some users in Northampton, these increases are tax deductible? I, 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 had, a business not, expense. I had not realized that. <laughs> so we're, yes. we're, we're saying, you know, you're going to go up a X percent. Mm -hmm. Then when you deduct it off your taxes, you're not really going up that percent. You're going down a few because you can deduct that from your taxes. Well, you still got to pay for it. You're not hanging the hole. Yeah. 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 You get a little break. Yeah. Right. I'm feeling better about it. There's well, no such thing. Yeah, exactly. But I, so your point's well taken. Obviously, yeah. on the business side, expenses are treated differently for tax purposes than they are. Uh, you know, it's not like a homeowner can deduct, you know, those kinds of utility costs. So, fair point. Fair point. Um, in the back, and then I'll come to you. Sorry. Um, what's your expected rate in five years? I mean, you're talking about the increases. I mean, where are we going to be sitting in five years? You know, years part of what we're trying to do, and that's part of why we're trying to diversify the, the, the revenue stream, um, and, and again, we can't, you know, we can look at consumption patterns and we can look at, um, you know, what historical levels have been. Um, that model that I showed you, uh, we were looking at trying to have combined water and sewer um, revenues at about 2.5% per year of growth. Um, in order to meet the financial plan. So that's kind of the combined impact. It's more on sewer because we have more uh, projects on the sewer side. You know, you see the huge, you know, 30 to 40 million that we have to put into the wastewater treatment plan. Less on the water side. So combined, it's about 2.5% is what we're modeling. Um, so that's, but again, I, it, you know, this happens with, uh, you know, with your taxes. People say, oh, 2.5%, my taxes are going up 2.5%. That doesn't mean that universally everyone's um, taxes go up two and a half percent because values change, um, you know, homes sell, you know, va you know, values are always fluctuating. The same is with water and sewer. Different consumption changes, um, more customers may be added to the system. Um, and so it's, it, you can't just universally say your bill's gonna go up two and a half percent. Obviously, my goal is gonna be over the next few years uh, to try to keep rate increases at a minimum. Um, and that's my goal. And that was, you know, we froze the rates last year. 
Uh, so there's been a year, you know, we're going on two years without a rate increase. So my, my first goal is going to be to try to keep the rates as low as possible. Um, and, and again, try to take advantage of historic you know, borrowing so that we can do these big projects, bond them now while the rates are low, and try to get them in design um, and get them built. Um, but I cannot say to you that uh, we can operate on a zero revenue increase for the next five or ten years um, and continue to run our business, which is a business. I mean, I know I'm sitting in front of a lot of people, but these are utilities and they are a business. And so I know you have financial pressures. I mean, the city's health insurance this year is going up 8.3%. I'm sure that's not an uncommon uh, theme for many of you. So for us, you know, 8.3%, that's about $830,000 uh, in additional expenses we have to bear. Obviously, we have labor costs that are going up. We have all the other um, pressures that you have as businesses to run these utilities. So, you know, when we're talking about, you know, why we have to do these things, part of it's the, you know, capital stuff we have to do, but then it's also just the operating expenses that are going up. So, that's my uh, long-winded answer. Um, I want to come here first, then I'll come back to you, Peter. I just want to thank mm -hmm. you for, uh, for the taking the time to try and figure out a, a, a fair system and to hire the consultants to t really delve into the problem of finding enough revenue to cover the costs of our infrastructure needs. I think what is happening in this country with our infrastructure is appalling and water resources are so important and if we listen to the news you, we hear of many communities that are having terrible problems with their water infrastructure and so trying to stabilize our rates so that we can come up with the revenue that we need I think we all should be very appreciative of. Thank you. Yes and we've certainly heard a lot about water in the news. Uh, yes. And about cutting cost, you know, cutting financial right. quarters on water. And we um, have old pipes. I mean, we yeah, exactly. Um, and we don't want to be putting polluted water into the river for other people to be using. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's enormously important. Or to pay large daily fines from DEP. I'm sorry, you've been waiting, and I apologize. And then I'll come back to you, Peter. So, I also want to thank you because uh, I think what you've been doing is really well thought out. Um, my concern is my husband and I own two multifamilies in North Haven. Yes. And I did watch on TV yeah. the last meeting as yeah. much as I could, and I only saw it brought up, I think Jesse Adams brought yeah. it up. Yeah. Um, so each of our houses has eight people living yeah. in them, and uh, they are pretty conservative. Okay. So eight people are using between 4,500 and 5,000 which is really good, mm -hmm. yep. right? I don't think I can ask them to conserve anymore. Yeah. Um, and our taxes and our insurance and our other expenses have gone up at a much higher rate than the rents. Mm -hmm. We try to keep the rents as affordable as we can, but I don't think we're at a po point where we can absorb much um, increase. And I understand that this year it won't be increased very much, yeah. but going forward it may be, and I'm concerned. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, um, was it seriously considered that that would be taken in, in, you know, just where you're at with that? Yeah, it, it was. And, and one of the challenges is trying to design a system that captures all the various types of users. And multifamily is a great example because you, you may have a single family home, and then you have a home that's converted into a four you know, units, individual units. And so unless that those four individual units are individually metered, um, A, you don't know how much each person is using individually, so you're trying to approximate that as a, as a landlord in a portion bill. Um, but when we run the numbers, and we've had people, and you may have been one of the people who contacted us, to do the comparison fairly, you have to say, okay, you have a four family home, and you have four individual units. You need to compare that to four single family homes and what the cost differential would be. Because that's really the true comparison. If you're upset that or people are upset that why does the um, you know, why does a single family home get the conservation rate but the multifamily doesn't? And what we find is that when you run that calculation and really run it out equally, so I take a single family home, so whatever it is, you're using 40 CCF, for example. I'm just picking that number out of out of the hat. 40 CCF 
um, and you're paying um, one fixed meter fee, the twelve dollars and sixty-four cents, probably because it's probably a home that's got a five-eighths inch meter. Yeah. Um, so you're getting, uh, so you're basically paying that much for the forty CCF. To compare it, you need to take four single-family homes that are each using ten CCF a piece um, and are, you know, are each paying twelve dollars and sixty-four cents each a piece. Um, and then combine, you know, basically look at the totals. And what we found is there's really not a major difference. So while we couldn't design a perfect system that, that had a rate built for multifamilies um, or, you know, or you know, four or five, six, eight families, because of the rate structure and because of the fixed fees, we do think that, that it's, it's, a, it's a small difference. And then, of course, the other problem is, you know, we're saying that if you actually use 16 CCF or less, you're going to pay less. I don't know how we would approximate that. You know, out of your forty thousand, who who gets the discount? Like, you know, that would be the other issue. Um, so, so that's you know, th those are some of the things. But we did really struggle, and Chris can tell you, we were we were struggling with all the various types of housing types um, and the different types of, of ways that this system. So we tried to create a system that matched our our customer base. Um, we, we, we looked even at uh, census tracts around income. I mean, we did a, you know, we, they did an affordability analysis to look at you know, census tracts in the city to sort of see what um, income levels were as well, um, and looked at three years' worth of bills for every customer in the city to, to analyze it when, we, when they came up with these recommendations. So I do appreciate that, and I guess what I would say to you about future increases is it's the same. I'm mindful of that, and it's going to be my goal to try to keep those at a minimum. Okay. Um, that's my that's my commitment. Okay. I but I also but I also have to be honest, like I was like I said last year, we're gonna have to pay for these investments. Yeah. Um, and so you know you can't design a system where nobody pays an increase and we can pay for those systems. Right. Um, so that's just you know that's the that's the reality of it. But I appreciate the, yeah. the question you well, have. Well it helps just to know you seriously totally so, yes we did. Okay. that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just wondering what the schedule is for those fixed. Yeah, it is a, it is a one, it's, this is not something I see as changing every, going up every year. It's something that had been historically let stay too low. I mean, you know, it costs us more than a dollar to print and send the bill to people right. um, every quarter. Uh, and we're charging a dollar, not to mention just the infrastructure and all the other stuff. So. It's, so that, and that's part of what you're seeing here is the collision, you know, you know, we're trying to sort of do this larger reform, and so you're seeing the collision of the, the change in the water volumetric rates, plus we're trying to also bring those, um, you know, bring those fixed rates up to a more responsible level. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we're going from a fixed rate that's generating $42,000, and it's been generating about $42,000 for the last 10 years. $42,000 again on a $6 million uh, plus, uh, well actually, uh, yeah, $6 million uh, budget. So what we're trying to do is raise that um, to get it to be not 0.4% you know, of revenue, but to about 2, 2.5% two of revenue. So, so I don't future, see, you don't see I do not see those changing every year. And, and that's partially why I lowered the, um, partially why uh, when, when, I, when we started seeing some of the anomalies, uh, in, in some of the higher users why we decided to lower the volumetric rate again even lower to try to offset that what was happening because again I think you know, moving forward the anomaly of what, what Bob and I were talking about with the differential you know between the smaller users versus the larger users and even the in, even the increases for the larger users are going to be much different because it's pretty much going to be just the volumetric rates going forward 
Um, it's not going to be the fixed rates changing. I, I see that as something we'll evaluate you know, every five years or something like that. We just want to keep an eye on them. Obviously, we weren't keeping an eye on them, and, um, and so we want to keep an eye on them. But I don't see that happening every year over the next five years. So I, I appreciate that concern. Peter, you had a follow Oh, actually, uh, Mansoor, you had a question, I'm sorry, earlier. Or a comment, or? Well, I just want to, I'm speaking on your behalf. Oh. Just that uh, the reason I'm here is I'm just very concerned, as Wes was saying, that we lose what, uh, I mean, it, it's, and you touched upon this for a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. and I also want to thank you for all the hard work you've done. You've always put a lot of time and thought it. Uh, I just want to make sure we're competitive as a town. Yes. That we're not in jeopardy of, even though this is a huge adjustment these mm -hmm. people are facing and they're not going to like any part of it, uh, that, that they can't look to neighboring town and say, I'm going there. Yep. And that's really my concern yeah. as a citizen because these, these, these companies, these businesses bring so much to the town. I totally agree and I totally, you know, and I, I hope that people will look not only at this proposal but all of the other steps that I've taken as mayor, um, which I believe have been you know, toward that same end. Mm -hmm. Investing in our city, investing in our infrastructure, investing in public safety, investing in our downtown, um, partnering with the downtown businesses mm -hmm. on the new DNA, um, increasing our commitment to that organization. So you know, I, I feel like we're doing a lot of those things, keeping the, trying to keep our tax rate competitive, and I think we have the most, com I know we have the most competitive uh, tax rate in the Valley for commercial operators. I was had breakfast with Mike Wall this morning, and he said that's basically how he sold keeping Cole Morgan in Northampton was our tax rate. That's how he convinced, basically convinced, you know, the corporate people who bought Cole Morgan why they should stay and build in Northampton. It wasn't the water and sewer rate; it was the tax rate. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so, um, so we're I'm committed to keeping that rate low. Um, I know I've said this before. You know, uh, Boston Business Journal does a list of the commercial tax rates in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Highest, uh, which is Holyoke, um, to the lowest, uh, one through 351. We're 221st on that list, so we are we are low. Um, and now John's going to going to talk to me. Just go a, ahead. Just a point about yeah. that, though. If, if my partners and I bought a dilapidated train station in yep. Holyoke, we probably wouldn't have paid as much for it. That's probably so, true. Yeah. You know, so so the that's true. Success values are much higher. Here. That is definitely true. Um, and you probably you may not have as many customers. Uh, you know. Depending on where you're located, as well, I would say. I mean, there's a lot of different factors. You know, and just to yeah. follow it's location, like, location, location is yeah. what you know, right. The location is the, the location is getting hurt, though. You know, as I mentioned at the yep. council meeting, we're not seeing foot traffic like we used to. Yeah, it's flat. So you talk about revenue sustainability. It it also pertains to us. I, I totally understand that, and but I understand. We don't have that, Dave. And then and then you see our expenses going yeah. up cons considerably. No, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of that, and I'm mindful of the pressures that all businesses are under, and particularly local independent businesses that are trying to compete with external forces like the internet and chains and you know, all the other things that they're competing with, and foreign labor and you know, all those things. Uh, so I, I get that, um, and I obviously I want to see your investment be successful, and I know we've been having conversations over many, many months about ways that the city can collaborate with you better on parking and some of the other issues there. Um, and you know, and I know you've been a leader in the DNA movement as well to try to help get that group started. So um, I want to continue to collaborate with you and every business in the city, but I'm also, I need to be forthright with you about, you know, these are major expenses that we have to take on. Um, just like, you know, I know you guys were drilling a one inch hole in some concrete yesterday. I'm assuming you're doing some <laughs> Some kind of water line or something yourself. Yeah. Uh, you're doing some infrastructure up there, um, so you understand that that stuff is always an important, an expensive part of your overhead. Right. I do want to add though that the rest of Massachusetts is seeing a seven percent increase in the restaurant um, arena, mm -hmm. and we're flat. Mm -hmm. So that's actually almost a seven percent decrease okay. compared to the rest. So we're going to see increase in fees, and you guys yep. are going to increase probably on the same structure of 5%, well you're saying 2.5% yeah. just this, but yep. taxes, yada yada. So we're yep. going to see a 7% increase, but we're completely flat in this town compared to anybody else in Massachusetts. So it's a major concern, obviously, mm -hmm. for us because we see no growth. And I yep. think some of the other factors that go into that are like parking and things like that. Yep. And I understand the infrastructure, and I know somebody has to pay for it, and yep. I get all the concepts of it because of business, but we don't have any more coming in. That's the scary part. Okay. 
And, and you know, I guess I'll say, you know, on the parking front, where we, you know, I, we did a major study on parking, and we're trying to implement some of those steps. You'll see some of those coming forward. We're in the capital plan. We're funding a new signage program to really improve our signage in the city to make it easier for people to come to the city to know where parking is. Um, and we're working on a number of other issues. Um, you're not gonna like this, I know, but i am also been working with business owners to try to get more liquor licenses um, for the city, because I feel like we're not competitive that way. Uh, because you can go to cities like you know, Boston and, and, uh, and Cambridge, and you, know, there's, you don't go into a place and they say, sorry, we don't serve mixed drinks, you have to go somewhere else. Um, I think that's part of a competitive disadvantage that we have, so that's why I've been working with some local businesses to get some additional liquor licenses. Um, and, and you know the bill I proposed because I know I've gotten some heat about it. Um, these are non-transferable <coughs> licenses. These are licenses that will not have a value. Um, so they're not going to be bought and sold on the uh, on the open market. Um, they're licenses that'll be, come back to the city if a user's not going to use them. But again, we heard from four or five existing restaurants who said, you know, this is something that's hurting us competitively. Um, that we can't get a liquor license. And I know it's something the governor agrees with and he's proposed reform on that front as well. Basically, if the pie is still the same size, everybody else would get a smaller slice, right? Potentially, yeah, but it also may bring more people to the city if they have more options. Um, I they don't. No, if it did, it's yeah. well, okay. <laughs> That's a scary well, part. And then we also have, then we also have, you know, we also have MGM down the street who's get, who doesn't even have to apply for liquor licenses. They automatically get liquor licenses. Which should be more um, focused. What's that? that I agree. Be. I agree with you that we need that's and you know I I've been criticized for focusing on that a lot, um, but I do think it's real and I and I you know testified before the gaming commission because I thought it was real, and um, and that is something we need to really focus on, which is why I think the DNA is such an important thing for us to get ourselves ready to compete with uh, Disneyland down there in Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> just built. Um, I have um, Mr. Kalibov. Yes. Um, uh, I don't think any business in this room is uh, been able to all the challenges that you deal with. And, uh, and by the way, thank you for bringing us here as well. But one of the things that I looked at all the way, all the presentations that you have, I saw it, I analyzed it and all of that. Yeah. That one, it seems like uh, you are basically targeting the businesses, the bigger mm -hmm. businesses. Okay? It, it comes across like that, and honestly, it just I'm reading it, not oh. to be funny or anything, but I thought uh, Bernie Sanders was here, oh, okay. okay, to do that. But um, I, I, honestly, I don't mind to participate, to mm -hmm. cooperate with anything that I can, okay. to make the city better and so on. I've been at the Hotel Rotato for 25 years, okay? 25 years, the bill, the water bill, for each quarter from five to six thousand to seven thousand mm -hmm. is time so time. Five to seven went up right now presently. Before these increases, I'm paying between fourteen to seventeen. Mm -hmm. Okay, thousand mm dollars. -hmm. For the whole year, only the hotel Northampton paying more than thousand dollars a week for the water bill. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, if I'm the biggest user, or whatever, or one of the biggest users. Yeah. Shouldn't the rate be somehow that kind of uh, uh, help with the business that business doesn't go to the challenges of uh, being in receivership, mm -hmm. like when I came and took over? Yeah. Okay. I remember I I was the one that came here and paid. Uh, I think it was around three hundred eighty something like that thousand dollar back taxes after the receivership and so on. It was like 15 cents to a dollar. Mm -hmm. Okay, I paid. All right. Do you really want to have uh, that, uh, that type of uh, environment? And, and honestly, we are here now for the water and so on and so on. Yeah. But I, I just want to emphasize that the other things also are the factor mm -hmm. that a lot of these people are here. Yep. You know, it is not only water and so on. Now, for the large uh, pipes or whatever that you showed us, yeah. okay, Fairfield, which by the way, the number that you had, it is wrong. Okay. Yeah, it is 
$3,000 actually less on that figure than you have. Okay. But that's beside We can, we have happy to talk with yeah. you about those numbers, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Fairfield, the meter charge was 15. Now, after this is going to be $315, a little more actually, $315. Yep. Okay. Which translates to 1200 bucks, right? Only for that little fix mm -hmm. to go up. Yes. Hotel Northampton, almost same scenario. Mm -hmm. It is going to go up. And on top of that, on top of that, I pay half a million dollars for stormwater management. Mm -hmm. Not a drop of stormwater goes to the city. Okay? I have a charge for that. Okay, 2000 something, which we called, I think it is going to be somehow adjusted. Okay? But these are some of the expenses that I don't think it is fair. Okay? If it is fair, everybody will understand. You heard on Thursday all the concerns, mm -hmm. including a resident who came in and said the businesses are bloodline of the no, bloodline of Northampton mm -hmm. city. Which that's the truth. Yeah. That's the truth. Coca-Cola, I'm sure they use a lot of water. Okay? Now, they can easily move their plants. Easily. Do you want to see that? You know, that little, little at a time, just chipping, mm -hmm. chipping, chipping. Um, the CPA that we pay on the real estate tax. The real estate tax is already out there. We pay the CPA. Why am I paying the CPA? I have my own. It's a historic hotel. Mm -hmm. I, why am I paying? And uh, all of these little charges, it adds up. Little mm -hmm. at a time, it adds yep. up. And uh, Jeremiah just mentioned that, you know, to, to hold Massachusetts, that's a fact. You can't see it with the tax revenue and all of that. It went up over 78 percent. We have it. On the food sale, we have it. Room occupancy, you can see it. That hasn't moved really mm -hmm. for a couple of years. Yeah, that's the sign of decline. That's the sign of decline. Right now it is like that, and later on I'm not being pessimist. I'm a very positive person. Yes, but optimist and all of that. But that's how it, it, it worries me. When I uh, when I was here in no, 1990, I came here. Okay, to It is started from like you know, 92, 93, 90. The whole town had a buzz. The restaurants were packed. You had to kind of be in line to go into some of the restaurants. Okay? You don't see that anymore. Okay? It is not like there are more restaurants. There are less people. And honestly, I'm not trying to be unfair or anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think city made any effort to bring people to Northampton. Mm -hmm. And one event that we had, which was uh, very good during the whole year. People came back because they tasted something. It was taste of tasted something. All of the problems with the wiring and so on came up, and and uh, people couldn't pay or you know, whatever whatever it was. I don't know the whole detail of it, but it kind of went out of the picture here. Okay. So after that, you look at the Springfield just putting few restaurants by the Basketball Hall of Fame mm -hmm. took all that market that we had here. So they are not coming here anymore. Mm -hmm. that, that's how it started it. And then now you see it is totally different environment. Totally different. So we, again, uh, I, I will do whatever that I can to cooperate, to pay extra or whatever. But only my business to pay Four or five thousand dollars more, and some people that, to the expert, think that these people they cannot afford. Which some of them actually said, we can pitch in to pay a little, okay, to bring their rate down. I think it's unfair. Okay. I think it's very unfair. And uh, if it is across the board, okay, everybody understands. There is going to be some infrastructure that has to be fixed. Mm -hmm. There is no two ways about it. It has to be fixed. Okay. You know, nobody minds that. You know? But one of the things that I think 
that uh, right now or a little later or whatever in 17, it is not the right time, is that the economy is still slow. It is still slow. It's not, it's not moving up. Everybody thought that it is going to go up, but mm -hmm. it is not. Okay. Okay. So we cannot raise the rate. I bring two dollars up. They are going to go to Hadley or they are going to go to Holyoke or stay in Springfield or whatever. We tried very hard to bring people here to Northampton. Very hard mm -hmm. to bring. And I cannot raise the rate. So where is the money coming from? So these are our challenges. Yep. And uh, if uh, if it is again, you know, cross the board, <coughs> nobody would mind. But right now it is like to the point that everybody complains about three dollars. Okay. You know, that's scary for three dollars. So let me just uh, try to I first of all I appreciate the concerns and I know you and I have had many conversations about these issues over the last many years and um, and I know we tried to work very supportively of your project on Con Street and try to support you in that. Absolutely. The, um, about Coca-Cola, because I know we've heard about you know Coca-Cola and the investment that they made to stay here, um, which we appreciate, And but I would also say that the city has made significant investments to keep Coca-Cola here, um, including, um, you know, they were given a almost, I believe it's a 10-year uh, tax um, incentive uh, on their new expansion. So they are, they uh, since 2009, I believe they're receiving a 50% uh, tax break on the new ex on the value of their new expansion. Um, that will keep that, that, that will keep going. Well, I know it's one that you, <laughs> I know it's one that you requested that they, that was not approved, unfortunately. But um, and then that that tapers off to 25%. We also the city also, but I just want to say because it's it's you know people keep telling me that Coca Cola stayed here, um, that the city didn't work with them, and that but I mean we we we. We spend over a million dollars building a new pump station on Bradford Street to accommodate um, their new um, uh, mm -hmm. bottling line mm -hmm. and to be able to provide them with the water uh, capacity and the and the pump capacity that they needed. So well, and the state are, pl those pumped are in a lot of money. Yeah, do, and it has to be done. It it's being done, done but we'll, yeah. Well, listen, to me, please. Uh, let me let me make this sure. point also. GE is going to Boston. Yes. Okay, GE. You know, as far as the housing, as far as all the stuff that they have to, they have to do, they have huge challenge. Yep. Huge challenge. You know better than anybody else. But those are some of the challenges yep. that the city has. You know what I mean? Yes. That has to happen. But again, to be fair, mm -hmm. it has to be fair in order that everybody at least feel good about it. Okay, we talked about the TIF and so on. Well, there's fair and there's equity. I mean, there's different different issues there in terms of I mean, everyone has a different definition of it. Um, yeah, but but again, tapping into the businesses mm -hmm. is not right. You know, I honestly, you know, we talked about the TIF and so on. I'm not going to bore you with yeah, no. it. But again, it was something that CD promised. It is on the list. Well, not it is all of that. Not this mayor, but some. You know, I I brought it forward. Oh, I did bring no, it forward. No, no, but come on. But I brought it forward to the city council, and they voted it down. Was the difficulty? That was the difficulty. Yeah, I don't have. Yeah, I'm not going to go on. Yeah, but it was city that promised that. No, anyone who is in the administration, they have to respect it. Okay. And move on, just like everything else that gets respected. You know, so it is. It is a little upsetting. You know, when you. Uh, when you look at the story of okay. but I but I do want to address one other issue about the equity because you mentioned that it's somehow targeting larger users or larger I mean this is a utility system and so what we're and it, I you know when you look at your um, if you're a business in town who has elect electrical connection to national grid um, or you have gas lines or you have telephone lines or you have internet lines um, you're paying, you, you know, businesses may need a larger, you know, T1 connection or whatever it is for internet. They may need larger phone system capacity. They may need multi-tiered lines to run their business. They may need a larger gas line to, 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 uh, to be able to fire commercial sized, you know, kitchens or things like that. Um, and you're paying a different rate for those because you're, you're it's a larger size infrastructure. That's well, what's happening. Well, I can, sure. And so what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that's exactly what we're proposing for the water system as well. 
Um, it's not targeting. Uh, uh, it's not targeting anybody. It's trying to apportion it based on your size infrastructure, that your your percentage of the infrastructure. So it's no. I mean, again, it's no different than any other utility yeah, um, that's using that same methodology. On the list, when you look at it, yeah, okay, there are a couple businesses that they have a smaller size. This is true. Usage is higher. This is true. Okay? Yep. And they are paying less, but because the size of the pipe is even larger. This is true. The pay, fixed, the and fixed fee. Higher, but the yeah. usage of water is lower. Even that one, it is not fair. So it, it, I, I'm not saying that 100 yeah. percent it has to be. But it, it, it has a room from fifteen dollars to go to three hundred fifteen. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit over the top. You know, it is it, it is not fair. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some other businesses are getting uh, discount. Okay. On my expense. So well, it's it, again, it's it's fair. it's based on How usage and it's it? based on size. And I know, I, but and you income. you know you I have one hundred and twenty rooms that are with people with shower you know one hundred and twenty showers and and or however many showers you have, uh, you know individual yes. bathrooms that are so that's a different model than a business you know, that has employee restrooms you know, or you know. You know I learned about the hotel and mm -hmm. the city tax and all of that. Mm -hmm. That six percent that amounts to a lot of dollar. Okay, you know I know it. Uh, 220,000 first year, 220,000 worth of room tax mm -hmm. that city got from Fairfield. Okay, I think that property deserves to tip. Okay, Hotel Northampton, 240,000 something like mm -hmm. that, or probably even more. Yeah. Okay, for the city tax. When I learned that that city tax is going to go for all the water being used, all the cars that they come and use the road, the gas, they come in and do that. They walk in the sidewalk and all of that. That 6% is gonna pay for those, okay? Again, now we are doing it a la carte. Since we have a hotel, we have to pay a little more. So I, I don't think it is fair. However you look at it, it's okay. not fair. Well, and again, I, I appreciate that, that, that concern and um, you know state the state hotel motel tax and state income taxes and all the other taxes um, all play a part in in the total picture which I appreciate. Eric Thank or you. Mr. Shore, sorry. Um, I got a bunch of questions, so please excuse me. No okay. Should be okay. The student is being disrespectful. I just don't understand. I, I've read this report. I've done as much research as I could do in a short period of time that I've looked at this over the last few weeks. I just don't understand the objective. I do understand the objective of this report, but I'm kind of looking at it cross-eyed because nowhere within this report, and I believe Mr. Woodcock could probably answer this much better than I, but nowhere these objectives, nowhere within these objectives that are stated in the report is there any objective to take care of what you have on the slide in terms of our future needs for both the water and sewer works, mm -hmm. if you will. The following objectives were stated. To promote conservation, to provide assistance to disadvantaged customers, to improve equity among customer types, mm -hmm. and lastly, to enhance revenue stability. I'll get to that in a minute. Those are the objectives for the structure. The water structure, uh, uh, the rate structure. Understood. Yeah. But this those report, were the city paid thirty thousand dollars for a report, mm -hmm. and the objectives that were given to Mr. Woodcock were those objectives because that's what. It well, no, that, those are the. As I said in my presentation, yep. it's a two-part thing. Part okay. of it was to look at our rate structure and to examine other rate structures around the, mm -hmm. around you know what other yeah. options there were, and then secondly to look at our capital needs and make sure whatever rate structure we design. Um, allows us to meet our capital needs, and they we provided them all the data that's in our capital plans, which are on my website. You can look at all no, the capital understood. plans. But I mean, the objective set forth by which they followed and drafted no. this report. It says yeah. it no, you're taking report. a slide from my water rate structure and using that to say that was the objective. And if you well, want to, in their report. If you'd like to hear from, well, I'm just yeah, saying exactly. I've read the report, yeah, and exactly. I also want to say. It, here's another, this is from the report, okay. and it's, it's available as was provided to me yes, indeed. And on the website. But the city's existing rate structure generates sufficient revenues to adequately provide for current financial sufficiency. It does not accomplish all of the aforementioned rate objectives. Okay, so we're presently providing for what our needs are. 
But the objectives, yes. okay, the objectives to me seems like we are taking from the business community. No. Well, the objectives here, at least in terms of how I read the report, we're basically trying to take from one piece of the pie. Yeah. Okay, but, but I mean that would be true if ever. If so we then don't let me ask you a question. Then sure. why would we not, as many communities do, mm -hmm. take a look at the flat system? We've had a flat system. I understand. Yeah. So why it, was it that broken? Why can't we say well, we want to just heard, if, you been, if you've been in this room almost a year to today, mm -hmm. you would have heard that the system was I broken. I read all about it because we we heard from a lot of people mm -hmm. who said, I you know, I'm a small user. I'm on. I'm not using a lot of water. I'm on a fixed income, I, you know, I'm, I, I, mm -hmm. to be able to have to pay the rate increase that I need to be able to pay, it's not fair to me. And it's, that's what we heard. So yeah, we, we you know, I, the rates that I proposed a year ago um, uh, would have, are basically the same in terms of revenue raising, um, but they were under the old flat rate system. And so what we heard from feedback from people was that that wasn't a fair system. Um, and we heard it uh, from a lot of people. We heard it from so city councilors who affirmed that. Um, but the system, um, I, I even heard that. Mr. Hardy affirm it. I, I understand. That wasn't fair. But, but part of changing so, the structure. Oh, yes, you did. Yeah, so, I, I can show you the quote. Mr. Mayor, part of changing the structure by which your office now sets the rate with city council That's to right. where the Department of Public Works with the Water Department decided what should be presented and, and would set a rate structure. Now politicizes this where you go out to the majority of the majority of the folks who cast the votes and say, we're gonna lower your water rate. And those of us, many business owners don't live in the city and are unable to vote, unfortunately. We are faced with Come what on, you show vote for, you'd vote for me, what you show as a slide. <laughs> you're showing slides that are incorrect because the the rate slide that you're showing with a number of different businesses does not account for the fixed charges and does not yes, account. Yes, it does. It does. Uh, I don't it believe does. so because the fire. So. I'm sorry. No, not the, the fire, fire not, charge. No, not the fire and, charge. And we're trying to, but we're trying yes. to compare to the current. Well, but it's not. And the concern that I have about the fire charges, again, yeah. buried in the report, 0.5% yep. right now is what our fixed charges cover. Correct. Yep. The report states that this is going to get it to 2%, mm -hmm. but there's a piece in here which also states that the hope is and the goal is to drastically increase that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says it here. The drastic it is, increase. well, I'm sorry. Drastic. It is, no, it is recommended that as able to, I'm sorry, the city should continue increasing this percentage yeah. in order to create, well, mm -hmm. in order to create, <laughs> sustain an even greater level of revenue stability. So there, there's, I just want to make that point. Those slides are not apples to apples at all because the fire protection, depending upon what size meter, is a substantial amount. And you, you mentioned something earlier where you said the cost. I had to pay when we were required, and our building inspector at the time, uh, uh, Mr. Patillo, has left, but he would confirm this. At the time, we were required to install, and I had to put in four systems at the time, three full systems and enhance one based on the unfortunate fire in Rhode Island. And we put fire uh, protection into the nightclubs. And we were told at the time that there was gonna be a, a system by which the city would help or the state would help fund the connection. Well, we spent you, just on you the believe connection. That? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's well, we another unfunded, that, it's an unfunded mandate. It was it's what they do but, all the but time. We, but I'm just, yeah. you know, responding to what you had mentioned about the cost of the city, we spent all that money to make the connection. Mm -hmm. We connected to the existing city infrastructure, which was there, yep. but the infrastructure was there. We tapped into the existing infrastructure. And you know, I understand that there's costs to infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's not costing any more because we tapped into the existing system. If there were a fire, hopefully there wouldn't be, mm -hmm. and our suppression system would take care of it, and we're using water, then maybe there should be a charge if there's a fire because we're using some water. But to penalize those businesses that as our insurance man here um, Peter Whelan had mentioned, you know, is for the public safety, is for everyone's good that's in those establishments. It's thousands of dollars a year for each of those establishments. Okay. So that's a point, and we've all paid to connect. I don't think anybody received any funds to connect, and we all connected to existing infrastructure. In fact, when we connected, there were no city employees that were even part of that connection. We had to hire the independent companies that had to dig the road, that had to tap into the water line, et cetera, et cetera. 
and we also pay a substantial fee for backflow prevention and for meter yep. checks, et cetera. Yep. So we're, we're Which already- is required by law. We of course, that. and yeah. we're already paying yeah. those fees. So yeah. the concern- Before the, you go on, can yeah. I just address- Yes. Uh, you can go on with your questioning, yep. but I do want to address one thing you said, and that's how the rates are set. So basically for the last 20, 30, however many years, there was an unelected board, the Board of Public Works, that would meet in a windowless conference room at, on Locust Street, um, and once a year they would vote the rates. Um, and if you look at the rate history, um, it, the rates over time were fairly significant every year. They were, you know, if you look back at the history of it, I mean, obviously when we built the waste, the water treatment filtration plant, we had to do a huge increase to be able to cover that mandate. But they were voting rates for a long time, we and never we had a 24% increase and then in what, the sewer rate. And then what? I've been and then what would happen is we would then the elected officials would hear like, why? You know, how did our rates go up? Why did you raise our rates again? So when I when the charter changed and authority was given to me um, to decide what was the best way, I heard from counselors, I heard from the public. They wanted more accountability on. The rates they wanted to be able to to hold somebody accountable when they change rates and if you look at every you know most other communities and cities you know the the, the, the mayor and city council have a role in that process there are some you know MWRAs and the Springfield has its own commission etc but um, in most other communities um, and as you know in in Holyoke uh, you know the, the city council there never wants to touch the sewer rate. Um, which means the taxpayers are paying for sewer out of the, that's why, you know, partially was driving their tax rate. So, so I actually made that change because I wanted this process to be more transparent. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and I, and I would, th I would say this has been the most transparent, most open water and rate setting process in the history of the city. And one could say probably yeah. the most unfair if you're a business well, person. Well, but again, it, we're talking about large infrastructure and small infrastructure. And I would and argue that the large users, yeah. as was mentioned here, yeah. I would argue that the larger users, yep. based on the larger users, the exact opposite of yeah. what you mentioned. But have if, you run the numbers if, if on the your larger, businesses? If the larger users... Have you run the numbers on your businesses? Have you I actually have. run all my numbers. And so... And so I'm these, really concerned. Well... Because this is a wolf right now. The Spoleto so, uh, rates I'm, are going to go I'm, up. Spoleto rates, I would hope we can go well, up on our water rates water because rate. I'd love to have a tenant. I would too. Okay. I would very much. Well, you know, when we talk about And again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Yeah. yeah. But I'm concerned. I've run all my numbers. Okay. okay. I'm concerned as follows, which some people may not have picked up on. Have those of us in this room that run a business taken a look at the sewer rate? It's gone up 24% at least what was proposed here. Your secondary rate that you went back was less, okay? And you're now basing it on an 80%. 80%. Understood, Correct. but that's gonna change. So so it's gonna change. It says it could, be, it, could be look, change. it could be looked at annually. No, the sewer rate would be looked at, but we're also, yeah. I understand, yeah. believe me, I've been here long enough. I understand and now that it's, now that it's in an office as opposed to within the board, again, there's different incentive. And so you think an unelected board that, that, that is going to be There's different changes. incentive, I understand. But my concern is that we've, we've just had what amounts to be a phenomenal increase in the rate. So you can play with the numbers because you've gone to an 80% figure. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I, would, I would much prefer to see a flat system and a flat increase for everybody across the board because I would be one that says that the larger users are subsidizing the smaller users, not the other way around. I'll give you an example. In the city of Hoyle, and Mr. Woodcock, he's being paid by the city and being paid by you. I'm not certain what he wants to share with regards to information, but I'll use one example. In the city of Hoyle, we lost one user on the steam system. That one user, the largest user on the steam system when they went away, basically pushed the city of Hoyle's gas and electric department to do away with steam. That one user was so large that they subsidized for everybody. Mm -hmm. So you can argue and look at this with any set of eyes, but the fact of the matter is we want the big users using Definitely. as much water as they can use yep. because that's subsidizing the smaller user. So you're flipping it to where you're trying to show that the larger users, whether it's Coca-Cola or restaurants, is being subsidized by the residents. When yeah. you showed the pie chart, you were showing, if I wrote it down correctly, you were showing, we right, showing 8,135 yeah. residents that are consuming. No, not residents, customers. Customers, I'm Many sorry. of those are, are businesses. Well, the majority are residents. Well, yeah, 47% consumption and only 389 users. 
That 389, we could only hope that they would consume twice as much as they're consuming because we've got the water. And, they're, and they are paying a lower water rate than the small class users. Well, they, they are, are paying a lower water rate. How is that? They're, oh, their volumetric rate expensive. is lower than the highest tier, than the highest rate the highest, for. The highest the highest rate. Yeah, well, the the is Put it back. No, I'm talking about our current rate. No, I'm just saying, rate. under my proposal, right. the largest right. users, the people right. with a one inch, are paying a lower volumetric rate. They are. It's, sure, it's sure, a lower sure. number. I, I, I'm not making it up. I, I know what you proposed. You, again, you but can, I'm just saying it. It's a, go can, back to the. I mean, you, can, you can explain it how you want. I'm to not. Explain. How can I explain away the fact that they're paying ten cents less than the than the smaller user? How do I explain that away? It's it's. Smaller users are using less than sixty. What's that? If you look at the chart. Yeah, for the for the yeah. So 582 uh, and then 572. 572 for the larger than one inch. So what they've was, got a they've got a built in main reason for going away from the flat do. system. What was the main objective for that? The main objective that I I, I had four of them, which I, are the I, ones I you keep talking about. Report, but what what was the reason? Was because because I was told conservation. Yes. And you don't think we have enough reason to conserve when we're paying on the in and on the out? No, I think everybody has everybody has you know an incentive financially, but we were also trying to build in conservation for our smaller users that were telling us price. that that they were they were you know we heard from people that were so why reduce not their draining price? their bathtub if they want to conserve then they'll pay less but you reduce their price okay. well so the biggest incentive to, would be don't well reduce their price yeah. unless they conserve then they save the money yeah well so so you've reduced the price but the business owner's price is up and i'm yeah. going to remind everybody yeah. because i need to because yep. i spent a fortune on it that for 7 years we fought against the bid which was shoved down the business owners' throats illegally, that would have amounted to a 43.5% property tax increase. A year, that yes, 43.5% property tax increase. It's documented. Mm. Okay. I don't know how any business owner would survive today if they were forced to pay that and all these additional fees. It's just, it's one after another. And, okay. and I to reiterate what, what Mansoor is saying, I don't see any objective here to try to help business. Not one. That wasn't one of the objectives. Okay. Not one. Yeah, and in I, fact, and no, it was not one of the objectives in the world. There's not one to try to look at the business community. We're here as an afterthought. No, you're not. You are not. You really are not. Uh, and and, and I appreciate you holding the meeting. No, but but it was looking, after but, what happened at the city council. The, no, no, no. I, I, I've been, I, you know my number. You know how to reach Absolutely. me. Absolutely. We talk frequently. If you have questions, I'm always available. Yep. And again, the structure that we the structure that we created has the lower 572 consumption for the for the largest users. Mm -hmm. So that's not that's you know. So you have to look at that and acknowledge that. I've looked at all of it. Um, so that so. I don't understand why okay. we can't stay with a flat system. Wouldn't it wasn't that, broken. Well, it was broken because when we were trying because to do a moderate, when we, no, when we were trying to do a moderate increase, we heard from residents, and I have a counselor here. And of course, you're, and and you're not going to hear from any residents now. What's right. our, you're not hearing from any residents. Oh, home. actually, we have heard from Complaining. residents. Thank you. But we have <laughs> residents. Complaining. We have residents that were here. No one's. No resident is going to complain with this structure. Well, they're they're what they're yeah. happy about is that people going to be very happy. People that are on a fixed income or I understand all of the will have a discount. I understand. Yeah. Yep. But the you solved you solve that problem. But the well, business, no, I solve that, solve that problem in a way that's still that's still equitable, and that businesses are not, are, you know, again, are paying a very fair and competitive rate. What we're trying relative to, say, to the whole system. What we're trying to say is business, relative to the structure. Business right now is yep. on a fixed income. Yep. That's what we're trying as to say. Is, as is the city. So yeah. exactly. So exactly. the resident that you're talking about, who's on the fixed income, that can't pay it, mm -hmm. we're on a fixed income. Yeah. That's what we're saying. It's flat. It's fixed. And you're increasing it to us. Well, we're giving it to us. So why are we any different than the resident? They're on the fixed income. You're, they're complaining to you. You want to help them out. I'm wanna, telling you right I, now, we're on a fixed income. I want to help. Yeah. Increase. I want to help everybody. What's the difference? I want to help everybody. But in trying to design a system that's equitable, this is really the, the this is the, the way. Again, to do the it. objective. I'm I mean, why, why, why just to go not, back to the. Why objective. don't you complain when you get a bill from? Uh, national grid. I, you oh, I do. I know you can I can show you the letters. Why are you saying, why aren't I paying the same as I a residential? I can show you customer? the letters, David. I complain about, about everything. Yeah, I, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs>
I think I know. But I'll also point out you charge a historic historic reservation not, fee for the Calvin. Yes, I do. But I think you've got enough to replace the A at this point. Absolutely. In those and as I mentioned to you, so, and I said I send somebody and put the damn A up myself. Because the city money is paying for everything that the academy is. Yeah, it's a city owned business. It's not the Alvin. It's a city owned academy. Now we're going to get personal. Because I'm not here about the Calvin. No, but I'm not saying, here about my sign. But what you're saying is that that doesn't have an impact on business in Northampton. Yes, it does. That, that, that empty Main yeah. Street building. We're talking about water and sewer. No, we're not. No, we're, no, we're, no, we're not. not. We're talking about impacts on business. Okay. And it's not water and sewer rates. I haven't heard from a single business tell me I'm leaving because of the water and sewer rates. And, and when I do hear that, what are you going to do? Also, I'm not leaving. What's you that? What are you going to do? I'll wait to hear it. And then I'll okay, talk because this is my point. When we do what business do you own again, Wes? I don't remember. You know what I'm concerned about? Is that when, when Coke, when another huge user yep. that's fifty-seven percent of the revenue yep. leaves, yep. okay? How are you going to make that up? What's going to happen to water and sewer rates for those old elderly people, people living on a fixed income? If one of those businesses said, "Hey, you know well, what?" Coca-Cola is definitely changing their business model all around the country. That's definitely a concern. They're actually moving back to their old model, which is to moving away from owning their bottlers to going back to you know franchise. David, bottlers. the concern so, I have is that you are you are reacting and you are and I said again no disrespect yeah, but, but you, you are reacting you to the tell, residents yeah. that are complaining. But Eric it's not fair for you to say that these water and sewer rates are the things that are impacting business. It, it's your one of many. your right. vacancies are impacting and why do you think there's vacancies here? Uh, is it because of me? No, because you won't. Why are there vacant? Well, Maybe we should look at that. You'll have to go down me. Strong. I don't own any of those vacant storefronts on Strong. There's three more now. That's true. Okay, and That's I don't true. own the majority well, of Main Street. What I'm saying is that there, it's multifactorial. You really cannot tell me that 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 your biz that it's all about I the water. I can tell you that, and, and I, I didn't. I'm not here saying that. I didn't say I'm moving well, out of town because of it. No, but it's you just one more thing that we chipped and exactly. chipped and chipped at the business exactly. community because we're not screaming every day yep. at all. Maybe the residents are, but a fair system but most, would be to keep it flat, just like our tax rate. And as the downtown business owners go, so goes the city. And the same with the values. If our downtown values start to go down, mm -hmm. which is going to happen then all of the residents will start to complain because their home values are going to go the way the downtown yep, goes. No doubt about and it. it's no surprise. You've heard it from enough business owners, including Montsor. We're not flat. We're down. Mm -hmm. I can say yep. we are down. The city's down. Yep. And unless we take a look at that systemic issue, this is one piece of many. Now's not the time to try to get, as it said, Mr. Woodcock, we need a more progressive system. Now's not the time to be pro progressive with how we're looking at changing a water rate from flat to tiered. Flat worked just fine. You're gonna get residents that are gonna complain. It amounts to a nickel difference, a nickel a week. It's actually right much now. more substantial than that. If you if you look I read at the, the report, but if you look at the increase two dollars and sixty eight cents yeah. annually. But if you look at the increases, it's much different than that. It plays out much different. I'm sorry, I just I, no, I'm, I'm sorry again, too. I'm no sorry disrespect. Too. It's just, we Same are, here. look, I own a lot of property, I'm really concerned. I've never voiced this publicly, okay? Yep. And yes, my A's fallen off, and Spoleto's vacant, and Grub is vacant. There's a reason, David. You don't think I want to collect rent for that space? I showed the space the other day. First question, restaurant owners that came through. What's going on with this water and sewer? Oh, okay. okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Do you okay. know how much, how much is restaurant, how much are water and sewer rates? Yeah. Spoleto was $12,000. Okay. Can, you, love, can you tell me who that person is? I will. So I can yes, talk to you. Absolutely will. Because I've heard from lots of people who oh, say, you don't, you, you, I mean, no, we I, need business people if, if you're all What I'm saying is, I've heard from lots of when people who you've shown that business to last year when there was no increase in water and sewer rates. It's not the only reason. It was a okay. question that came up. So it's not it the only reason. One question. But you're making it the only reason right now. I just think I'm you're not. right. Okay. But I'm right. Absolutely not. Yeah. Did, can I, say I didn't yes. bring up my vacancy. You did. Well, no. What I'm saying. I didn't is, bring up any of them. You brought it up. It, well, no. What I'm saying is, you're saying that this water One of and sewer issue, and I'm saying that there's other issues that are affecting the city it, as You well. got to start thinking about the business community. I am thinking about the business community. Can I say I do something? Think about the business can I say something? Um, what, what Eric is saying is that yep. instead of affordability, that's why we have some storefront empties. Okay, when people come in for whatever business that they have, if they have to pay the rent, then the landlord has to charge yep. to survive because of again some of these expenses that it is high. They have to charge appropriately. Okay, yeah, and also the cost and food <laughs> traffic and all of that that yeah. it is reducing, so it makes it flat, okay? I know that, 
When I'm busy, mm -hmm. the city is busy. Okay. When I'm not, the city is not. You know, I, I know that for a fact. All right. Now, if I'm flat, everybody else is. I was hoping that with Fairfield, we, we bring a lot of people and mm -hmm. make it better. Even with that one, if you ask, everybody is flat. Okay. So there is a problem there. All right. And now, with all of these rates and so on that we were talking about, you just look at the business decision and all of that mm -hmm. you have to make. I have to make a little more money to pay, or if I can, which I can now, I have to cut down. So just today, I'm talking to the general manager, saying that because of the water bill, we have to cut down on some of the flowers. We, we don't want to put all those flower baskets and so on mm -hmm. that we have around. We should cut a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Conservation. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, little by little, if the city goes down like that, the quality goes down like that, it is dangerous. That's what I'm saying. That like, honestly, I am worried. Okay. I know how it was before. Okay. And I know how it is now. I don't want to go back okay. to how I took the hotel over. Okay, all my investments are here, all my investments, and and I hope people appreciate that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I put trust mm -hmm. in the city and so on, and and I did that. We talked about all of that. I'm not a greedy person. I understand the challenges and all of that, but it is a concern. We should really spend a little bit of time, rather than doing things like that, to see how we can bring people in to town. How we can do feeder business, mm -hmm. okay? Feeder business to the restaurants, whether it's office building or it is, you know, whatever maybe, yeah. or event or something. I haven't seen that. Okay. Can I go to someone? I, I have a question or comment, I guess, the point of information. Um, I'm Pat Cognitive, and I uh, spoke last night at the uh, council subcommittee. Uh, name Community resources. Community resources. Community resources. And uh, so as to uh, address what I think is a is a, uh, somewhat of a misconception about the vacancies downtown, which has uh, been suggested. Uh, uh, certain, the hip bones connected to the thigh bone and a lot of uh, interrelationships. I think that there's a, there's a tendency when there's a lot of important public issues to be discussed and debated and, uh, and uh, where there's differences of opinion around those, it's, it's, it's important at least to not start off on the wrong point in terms of um, information. I handle a lot of property in the greater downtown area. Um, and all of the storefronts, that uh, many of which were, were reported in the, uh, in the recent flurry of articles between the Springfield Republican and the Gazette, all the storefronts uh, that I'm handling are all full. They've all been filled. Now, you're not, you don't see someone moving in today because it's taking you know, a month uh, or so for that those transition for that transition to take place. But on Main Street, for instance, Tempest is filled, Irish you know is filled. You see that Verizon is in the United Savings Bank. The uh, Mercantile is, is filled. The Grateful Hound has moved into the deals uh, on Main that's next to that. So uh, the article tried to make a point. Uh, the articles, I think, tried to make a point, which certainly left, left a lasting impression, because I heard a lot about it, uh, that that was somehow an indication of the problems that exist downtown. It's part of, of, of the challenge of, of having to have a, the kind of community that we have, and it's certain by, certainly by comparison, at least in some people's memory, to what we've seen in the past, it's, it's, it's a, a sharp distinction, and it really isn't. A lot of what occurred, the articles that were being written, began to be written in the latter part of last year, but didn't come out until until March. And over that period of time, which is always the case after the first of the year with the holiday seasons, place the uh, 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 tenants leave, they move on, they, their leases are, are, are ending, they make a choice to run it out through the holiday season and then, then those vacancies appear. And that's what everyone saw. So before we jump to conclusions in a general way about, about uh, there being vacancies downtown that we should be overly concerned about. There are vacancies downtown, and we would like nothing better than to have those those filled up. But as a practical matter, the extent to which was being reported it was inaccurate. And so I don't think we need to mesh these arguments in such a way so as to suggest that A is connected to B is connected to C. 
They're all important arguments in and of themselves, but they need to be separated in a way that can let us come up with productive solutions as to how we might best deal with them as a community. I would offer this though. Businesses, there's a lot of negative connotation floating out there around businesses mm -hmm. today. And I, I understand the feelings involved with that, but businesses don't all take this money. When they're being hit with this and, and elsewhere with hats and stuff, yep. this is all money that they reinvest in the business. It's not all, um, so, you know, I don't know anybody in this room, I'm really a newcomer, but, you know, for me, I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, okay, that person that you're trying to benefit, the smaller user, the person downtown, now they're going to go downtown and they're going to get a meal. It's going to cost them 5 or $10 or more. They're going to go somewhere because, like he said, this gentleman said, we're operating flat. Mm -hmm. So that cost is going to be passed on to the people you're trying to help. So I just wanted to make that point. And we reinvest this money. Like, this is money that we would invest in our infrastructure. Um, it, I just feel the need to say that. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yes? Dave, do you have a figure on how many people fall under that category of getting uh, a no fee for their meter or a reduced fee? I mean, how many numbers Me Meaning the low income deduction? Yeah. yeah. Um, so they would have a no meter fee. So it would be the same people that get the, it's basically if you qualify for the abatement on your income right. tax and on the CPA, do we know what we estimated that to be? 20. 20 people. About $20,000 would be a About how many people? Is that a um, uh, uh, hundred, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, we spent more than that on the study. A couple of hundred thousand. Uh, I mean, it's, it's 20,000, so roughly. I, I could check with the assessors. They could let us know. Because, I mean, basically, it's based on the people that come in um, and submit their tax information every year to qualify for the abatement. They would automatically be given the abatement for their um, water and sewer bill. And again, it's, it's state regulations about what qualifies for low income. So what would, um, if, if it were if it's twenty thousand, so what would if we kept the flat system and if we had to subsidize based on our water uh, revenues, water and sewer revenues? I mean, it's a negligible increase to account for the twenty thousand dollars. That's that one component of the system, and that's a right. that's an estimate. And we don't know who's out right. there that may not be taking advantage and of it. I wasn't saying that. I'm not. I, I fully understand and have never once, uh, never once called and complained about an increase in water and sewer. I understand the cost of infrastructure yep. for that. So all I'm saying is that keep it flat, keep it fair, and whatever that percentage has to be across the board, including this subsidy that might have to happen for our underprivileged folks that need water and sewer use, which sounds like it's fairly negligible, you keep a flat system, you keep it fair, and there's no one in the business community that's going to complain, I highly doubt, based on a slight increase. You've heard from residents, they're always going to complain on that. But the business owners aren't going to complain. There's not one business owner that would complain if there's a slight increase. We understand the cost of infrastructure because we have to deal with it every year, every day. But this, this system, where they're lowered to 436, where it was started, it was for the first 16, for the first 1600 cubic feet. Most of the residents are yeah. under that. Yeah, the most are going to fall. Or no, uh, no, they're not. No, no, they're not. No, no, no. no. No, no. I mean, I, you know, I wish I was. I, I, you know, my quarterly, you know, it was twenty-one. It was twenty-one hundred the last time I checked. Uh, you know, twenty-one hundred cubic feet. So, I mean, check your bill. That's the other thing. Check your bill. Um, it's a very small. So it's sort of it's a mix. It's a blended rate. You're going to get for the first sixteen hundred, and then beyond that. Um, yeah. No, there's not there. Uh, Twenty well, but that's not accurate because that we're showing consumption at the tier one rate and the tier two rate. That doesn't mean that those are people who only use that amount. I don't think because um, it's a blended. So uh, I mean, the tier, the twenty, the the sixteen CCF accounts for what did you say? Twenty one. The first sixteen is about twenty four percent. About twenty four percent of the consumption. Um, and so, um, it, you know, there may be some people that are just, again, living alone, uh, single, um, not using a lot of water. They may fall under that. But most people are going to have a blended rate or they're going to be four people to a house or, you know. If you're like well people, under that. And that's why I have the timer on my son's shower. Yes, well, I have, <laughs> oh, I, have I have a 16 and an 18-year-old daughter who take a long shower, so I feel your pain um, on that one. 
Yeah. Is Pat. If I could just mention one other quick thing. Mm -hmm. But the, but the uh, I, I've spent many years on the Board of Public Works, and I'm, I'm presently on the on the diluted uh, Public Works Commission, which has really no no uh, function left, no pun intended, of, right? of any of any uh, significance. And so I've seen both sides now, and I think that I think that it, it's entirely appropriate. I disagree with there. I think it's entirely appropriate that the that the, the the business of setting rates be in the hands of those who are publicly elected and responsive to those who are the users. And I would suggest that's all users' business as well as as residences. It's it's a system that uh, we, we would never have a, 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 a uh, an informed discussion like this amongst amongst those affected by water rates as we would set them over the years, we would, that wouldn't occur. We'd, we'd kick it around the table and we'd go with the recommendations of the staff. And so this system is new. It's as new as the charter that gave us the ability to have this system. So we need to respect the fact that while we've vested this responsibility in, in new hands, if you will, it, it'll be a, a little difficult to, to uh, transition, no doubt, as we're experiencing. I think the end result will be one that's better for the public. It will provide this kind of opportunity for input as to how it may best be handled going forward. But uh, I really think that it's it's a, it's a uh, it's a strong supporter, obviously, of the charter. But uh, as a way of, of dealing with things under the contemporary uh, concerns that we have to uh, uh, pay great attention to in, in the operation of municipalities such as this, that's where. It, best lies, and I think that we've just got to work out how we can best do that, I guess. Yes, Rich. Um, quick question. So in the first year of the increases, how much is that intended to raise? Uh, in, terms of, in terms of new revenue, again, the, the projection was, what's that? 2%. Yeah, 2% on the water side, 3% on the sewer side, so sort of a combined 2.5% of overall revenue. And and some, of the, some of it comes from rates, some of it we're also using uh, from our capital stabilization. You know, we're, t we're taking money that we built up over time to help pay for some of the projects as well. But yeah, that's the goal is to generate. So do you um, have a dollar figure? What is the, um, the d uh, I don't, I, I have a lot of numbers in my head, but that's one so of the whatever that number is, it's not insignificant. Yes, no doubt about but it, it, yeah. Most yeah. Like from budgeted FY16 to budgeted FY17, it's the difference in that number. Um, so I just most, <coughs> if most um, users, yep, um, we'll see a decrease. I think you're going to see some users. Well, actually, in the smaller scale, you're going to see increases. The smallest users are actually going to see yeah. increases right. because their fixed fees are going to go up. But, those but there's a but there's a minimal. but there's a pressure valve for low income. That protects them from that because we we right. we so, so, so in the, the lower end they're going to see larger increases in the middle it's going to be sort of a moderate to a push a of three dollars so on average all yeah. those users are probably relatively flat as a user as a collective group uh, well it's within the yeah it's difficult to say um, because so, it's so many the consumption varies within the majority, the majority of the increase from the calculations I did came from the fire protection fees. No, the fixed, no, 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 and the fixed, no, no, no. The fixed yeah, well, fee, the, yeah. the fixed okay. fees, and the fire protection fees okay. accounted for figures that I did, and I wasn't given all the information. Yeah, accounted for that increase. Yeah, no, it's it's a well in the some ways. The, yeah, yeah, but the volumetrics changing, and then the fixed fees are definitely going up as a percentage of the revenue, no doubt about it. I mean, it was forty-two thousand dollars last year, and it was forty-two thousand dollars the year before, and 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 it was forty-two thousand dollars this year. It's like six hundred thousand dollars, I think now, roughly. the The fixed fees represent six hundred and thirty. Six hundred and thirty. So it's go, so it's going up as a percentage. It should be mostly. Well, no, actually, it's yeah. being spread across all the users and the and the, but the smaller users. So there's way more five eighths inch users in the city than there are. Um, then you know, in terms of what how the spread yeah. works, uh, the five eighths users are bringing in three hundred and sixty. So three hundred and sixty, three hundred and sixty one of the three of the six hundred thousand dollars in new fixed fees are coming from the smallest users. It's I mean it's it's math. I mean there's 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 almost eight thousand of them, and they're paying twenty five dollars, and there's like one or two big users. So I mean half of the six hundred thousand is coming from. 
um, so from 95 percent, and the other half is from five percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 in terms of the higher side, yeah, it, it doesn't right. make sense it, it is because unfair. we're. No, it's based on your. It's it's the same. We've had the same fixed rate system in place where you're paying based on the size of your connection. That's been in place forever. You've been paying a quarterly fee based on the size of your connection. We're just increasing that. Um, a crop for everybody. Everybody's being increased. Yeah, but so it's, it's too much I, I, yeah. But now, as far as the rate goes, for the future increases, mm -hmm. uh, they're all going to be certain percentage across the board. We're, yeah, but, but we would, we, users are yeah, get more we, no, we well. would look, we would look at these volumetric rates as a, as a whole, and they would move together as a whole. We, that's how we would look at it. That's what, when we reduced <laughs> the rates, yeah. we did it that way as well. So two years down the road, if you do. Two percent. It will be two percent for everyone. Yes, okay. that's so the that's or at least in terms of how the rate change would happen. That's right. Tier system. There's no given that that's gonna, that, that's my biggest concern. Well, the I, I live in oil yeah. tiered system, and there's yes. a reason why there's no business in oil or fewer businesses. Well, no, that's a tax rate. You have that's a split I understood, tax rate. We have yes. a split tax rate. Yeah. But you're doing the same thing that we're tiering a water rate, and so the concern that I have is over time, which is why so over time you could have a difference of how you handle the larger meter users or the business commercial owners mm -hmm. to the residents because you've split it. So you can you can figure out very easily yeah. your differences in revenues and, and as maybe different than what Pat is saying, I still have a concern that as you've mentioned, you do hear from a lot of residents, which I understand and I feel for that. Yeah. But because the constituents are going to be the most vocal. Those folks that are the residents of you guys are pretty vocal, vocal by my measure. <laughs> well, we're here yeah, just I mean, actually for two hours. It, but I'm saying this year, I think the business community has had a really yeah. loud voice in this process. I think you have. I think you've been heard. I hope you've been heard. Um, I guess and, my concern is just once, again, you, once but, you open those barn doors, yeah, but, but right. I'm going to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. I'm the mayor. I'm elected. Right. I'm the chief elected officer. Right. I, I'm held accountable every day for every decision I make. And people, if I make decisions that mm -hmm. you don't support or residents don't support, there's an accountability measure. Yeah, it's called some it's of the called business owners that don't vote here because we don't live here. So yeah, but you, but, but you, you participate. You participate in civic life. I mean, Aaron. You no, know, I mean, so, so just you because you don't live about owning the business. Or what's that? Then you chastise me no, about no, owning no, the no, business. No, no, no. I just oh, what I, it was a compliment. Then. No, the concern that I have is that you. Well, I, well, we can talk about it later. That's all. Well, if you're attacking in public, you might as well. No, no, no. I just I asked you about. You said we'll talk about it. Excuse me. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Well, no. I what business have you worked in or owned? Well, actually, my wife owns a business, and she's been a business owner for 20 years. I think I said you. you. No, I'm just saying I live in a family where you own yeah. or work in. I, I've worked in many businesses, and my wife owns a business, and she's owned a business so with you multiple have employees, business. and she's in a competitive so environment, a healthcare Good. environment, okay. and she sure. has all these same pressures as well. So Thank I you. see it when we do our taxes every year. I understand it. Um, so I do understand that. And we're in healthcare, which is... You know, talk about a business that's being squeezed and um, and, and pressured. So um, it's a challenge. So I do appreciate that. Um, I have my K ones and all the other stuff that you're dealing with, and expense sheets. And she owns property in Springfield uh, and pays water and sewer rates, and um, you know has uh, multiple employees. So I know firsthand what that's like. My wife has blonde hair, but uh, you asked well, me, no. and I asked you. Okay, so. so that's I'm, I'm not really sure what I can tell you. You're questioning whether I understand you know, business or not, and I, I, I think I do. Um, so again, I understand that this is, you know, I, uh, this is great though, I appreciate this, and I appreciate the feedback, and I've tried at every stage in the process to try to respond to the feedback, and I'm gonna think this through. Uh, we have till next week to go forward to the city council um, for the second reading on the volumetric rates, and I do appreciate the feedback, and I do appreciate the pressures you're under, and I and I'm, you know, trying to be mindful of all that. And I um, I know we kind of got far afield onto all kinds of different issues, and um, and I you know I you know Eric, I want to say we'll change you. that A will be fixed to sign uh, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Not tomorrow, but very soon. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
when I complain at a meeting, I don't want to bring it up. No, but you're killing me with the A. I'm sorry. You, you did accomplish that. But I wish I could refer the place to you, because I get the complaints about the A, and I'm like, it's not my A. It's my I get that. Across I the get board, that. fair for everybody. Okay. So we have a philosophical difference yes. about the structure. I get yes. that. So Thank I don't you. want this to be left that there's some personal animus because there's not. Yeah, exactly. Fred, you're going to have the last word, maybe? No. Maybe the last yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible that Mr. Wood could have said something about the what the effect is on business on the 53%? Wait, well, sure. Let me, okay, so you're going to hear from Mr. Chris Woodcock. Let me give you a, a couple of things here. And I know some of you aren't going to like it. And I do own a business, if that matters. I don't think it does matter one little bit. But I do own a business. Yeah, so. I'm telling you that I don't. As far as this being anti-business, uh, I can tell you with a very straight face that this was not anti-business. It was never intended to be anti-business. And the impact on business was very important, not just the mayor, the finance director, and the public works department. If this were anti-business, what would have happened here in Northampton is you would have had one tier structure, and it would have applied to everybody, and all of your consumption would have been at 582. It would have been much higher. But it was a very big concern that the mayor, the finance director had for the businesses in Northampton is why that didn't happen. And they said, we can't have a tiered system because it's going to impact the big users. It's not just Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola doesn't matter to the cost of water in that bottle of iced tea is less than, it's probably less than a hundredth of a penny, but it's certainly less than a tenth of a cent. And you know what a bottle of that sells for. So don't complain to me about Coca-Cola costing too much. The cost of water and sewer at a bottle of Coke is a very small amount of what the cost of that business is. Coca-Cola. So there was a very big concern about businesses in terms of looking at that, and that's why the larger meters, the larger businesses, the larger um, business owners um, had this separate rate was because of that concern. Um, now, there's th the fire protection was another one that, that's been brought up here, and what an awful thing that is. Everybody that's getting private fire protection has little sprinklers in their building, is getting a service. Those 200 people, those 200 businesses, or, or, or dorms in the case of Smith College that have fire sprinklers are getting a service that the other 8,000 people in Northampton don't get. And it's not inconsequential. Somebody mentioned, the, let me just finish, somebody mentioned the cost of water putting out a fire. The cost of water, I could pay for the cost of about 10 fires in your business with what I have in my wallet, and there isn't very much money in my wallet. The cost of the water is insignificant in terms of the cost of fire protection. The cost of fire protection is those 8 and 12 inch pipes, it would be 4 inch pipes if they weren't providing fire protection. All those pipes have to meet the highest summer demand plus a huge fire demand. Downtown area is 3,500 gallons a minute that those pipes have. Storage tanks, storage tanks, half of those storage tanks are there for fire protection. Pumps, all the pumps have to be able to pump water. When those fires happen, they happen any time of day, 365 days a year. And it's the cost of all of that oversized infrastructure throughout Northampton that you're paying for. The cost of the water is minimal. And whether you have a fire or not, the city has provided you with an ability to put it out 24-7, 365 days a year. And that is not without a cost. There is a big cost to do that. So far, you haven't been paying, you with fire sprinklers haven't paid anything for that. And it's been subsidized by everybody who doesn't have it. And I think that's something you need to keep in mind, is that that service that you've been getting for all these years has been getting paid for by somebody else, not by you. And you're getting a service that they've paid for. So when you complain about that, consider that. Now, somebody also asked just now about the impact on, on businesses in the water. Somebody said something about going to a restaurant, and if the price goes up $5, you know, it's because of the water rates. That's absurd. You can buy 750 gallons for $5. The increase in water is maybe 10, 15 cents for 750 gallons. And it doesn't take 750 gallons of water to feed me or my entire family when I go into a restaurant. There's a small amount of water involved there, and it's not $5. So when you say $5, that's an exaggeration. I understand it's an exaggeration. The other thing that happens is 
there's always this big concern that water is a huge impact on industry. And I would ask each one of the business owners to look at your expense reports and honestly look at how much water is of your total expenses. There was a program when the, sewer, uh, the federal government started paying for sewer systems in the early 70s. Federal grant program that paid for, uh, federal government paid for 75% of all the sewer improvements, treatment plants, pipes, pumps, everything like that. And Congress said, not fair to give this advantage to all the industries that will get it. And there was a program called Industrial Cost Recovery that was put into place um, that required all industries, large industries, to repay the federal government for the federal investment, that 75% in there, so that everybody but large industries got grants to help cities and towns build big sewer systems. And all of the industries complained. The Congressional Budget Office did a huge study of this. What is the impact of this industrial cost recovery program? And this isn't anecdotal stuff. This is real. Not one industry in the United States of America ever closed because of that. And that was far more onerous than $5.72 or paying all of the cost of water. The other thing I was going to tell you is when um, MWRA, Mass Water Resources Authority, came into to place. Had to clean up Boston Harbor. Everybody heard about all of that with Boston Harbor in the early 80s, cleaning up Boston Harbor and the cost of the MWRA. I was working for the city of Boston, which, by the way, has had an increasing block rate since the 1980s and hasn't driven out of business. Uh, and they've had it now for 35 years. Um, so there's one that's been in place for a long time. But what happened was when uh, Boston went in to, to sell bonds for all of its improvements, the rating agencies in New York, the people who said, are these bonds going to be worth anything? Should you buy them? What are they worth at the time? Um, said, we don't care about Boston Water and Sewer. Uh, we care about MWRA. And we care about what the impact of the rising water and sewer rates are going to be in businesses in Boston. That's what really worries us. So we ended up doing a big study. Uh, the firm that I'd worked for at the time did a big study of that. And we found that virtually no business in the metropolitan Boston area paid more than 1.5% uh, for water. And that included very big, large water users um, in there. There were a couple that hit up at about 2%, but very few businesses paid more than 1% of their total expenses with, uh, with water and sewer bills. And, and again, I ask you, when you go back there, honestly, look at what your expenses are, what's involved in it, and how much of your total budget, your total expenses in a year, are related to water and sewer. And I think you'll find it's a pretty small number, small percentage, especially compared to oil, gas, taxes, labor. That's not the issue. Yeah, that's not the issue. Well, no, you're saying you can't afford it, and you're adding too much. I think it is the issue. When you, when you suggest that it's, it's not affordable, I think it is. No, no, no. You're missing the point. You're missing the point. You're, and you're missing the point in that I'm not sitting here complaining. If the mayor says it's got to be 3%, then it's 3%. If it's got to be 5%, it's 5%. I've never complained. I realize the infrastructure costs for water and sewer. Mm -hmm. The concern that I have is that the word progressive with regard to what was put forth in your study and what you were charged with doing and what you responded back to the city about how we need to be more, quote, progressive with our rate structure. That's the problem. Progressive, to me, is unfair. There's no need in my eyes to tear this. And I'm not complaining about an increase. I don't believe any of us are. And you're correct. As a percentage of our other utilities, water is tiny. I'm talking your total expenses. And not total expenses, of your utilities. but even with regard to our other utilities. We can't run a business without water. No Sorry. different than with power. So I'm not complaining about that. I'm complaining about, about what you were charged to do and how you did it by being progressive. Right? Okay, if the word progressive... No, it's not just the word. It, it's, it's the no, methodology it of what you've done. What it said is it's, it's more progressive. Awesome. And what it really is is less progressive because the way the system is, particularly the sewer right now, is incredibly progressive. Those five, five um, uh, businesses, Smith College is in a business, that's why I'm hesitating with the word, but those five accounts, let's say, that, that have sewer meters right now are paying on what goes back in sewer. Your home, your home, your home, your business, all of you that don't have a sewer meter, only 80% of the water in general goes back to the sewer, yet you're paying for 100%. So 100 gallons that goes into your home or your business and only 80 gallons comes out, you're paying for 100 gallons unless you're Coke or the other four, in which case, no, they get a break. That's regressive. And so this change, it's this change is less regressive. And if you want to, we use the word progressive. Look, 
You know, you can you can, can, you can go up twenty percent. It went up twenty four percent, twenty four percent, and you've dropped it by twenty percent. So I understand that. I've never called the mayor and complained about paying one hundred percent. I want to pay my fair share of it. I just don't want to pay somebody else's. Okay, I'm addressing the question that you had a real problem with the word progressive. Now what I'm trying to say is, let me correct that. Rather than being progressive, it's not as regressive, is what it is. Because this, the thing that causes the 24%, is incredibly regressive, incredibly unfair to everybody that doesn't have a sewer meter. And the cost of putting in a sewer meter for everybody in Northampton is absurd, number one, and they don't work, number two. They clog up. You can imagine why they clog up. Everyone's been living with that system. I've not complained. I don't know. Has anyone here complained to the city? I'm speaking as a business owner, not as a resident, and I do it the same in Holyoke. I'm just not complaining. Uh, so we're trying were you to get, aware of it? We're trying were to get aware aggressive were you with aware the rate Were you aware Absolutely. of it? How many of you were aware that, that there were five of them that had sewer meters and you didn't? I knew there were people that had sewer meters. I didn't know the number. Yeah. One. Okay. Well, I, I, so that's the point. It's, it, the progressive. No I, one's I, complaining about that. Don't, no don't, one don't here focus is complaining on progressive. About that. No one's complaining I, about I'm, that. I'm hearing you complain about 24%. I've heard you no. say 24% over and over and over. Right, because I'm pointing out. Right, I think out. everybody in this room has heard you say 24%. I have. I'm just pointing so out. So don't say people. you haven't said it when you said it. Excuse me. I'm pointing out to people because you're talking about how progressive this is and how we should be happy with I'm it. saying it's not regressive. Not. I've changed that. Hold on. We're, so don't hold on to progressive. that it's 80 percent and all I'm trying to point out is yes you are correct it's there. It says 80 percent of meter water consumption. What it doesn't show is our existing rate right. and nowhere on that slide does it say plus 24 percent. Right. That's all I'm saying. It's not plus 24 percent. No, it's not. It's not because it's not calculated on eighty percent. I understand. And everybody so you take that, that and then you I, I don't believe that. you do understand if you keep saying it and saying you're not saying it. Please, I know how to do math. I don't okay. believe you do. Okay. I think you paid a lot of money to be really good at arguing. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that's really. I said it's up twenty-four percent, and then eighty percent of that. I think. I think. You were paid twenty. You were paid twenty. You first walk in and you insult Coca-Cola, one of our biggest people in this town. Insulting Coca-Cola. What I said was how much the cost in the iced tea. Of the water is. We understand that. Yeah. Man, and, and this isn't about Coca-Cola. Right. They're, they're, not not about they're not leaving the city, believe me. But they're not. And they're not leaving the city because they have water. Yes. <laughs> you know, one of, one of the issues I have is we, we just completed our first full year, 2015. The city was the largest benefactor from our business. And now it's going up. I mean, I didn't get into business to keep the city afloat. No, sure but, but, that's, but that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And we, we've not complained. We pay our bills. But this is just another, it's another not, jab at us. It's not I, that I water and sewer is going up. It's that. It's the whole comprised picture. Yeah, I don't think anybody's... Uh, it's it's water 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 that's really what it is. None of us are complaining yeah. about the need to go up. I don't know. Okay. No one here is. Okay. You don't have to okay. answer to the, all the other stuff. <laughs> so. Are there other stuff about... You mentioned, well, I think you covered all the issues around... I just the, the objectives, I guess, I was sort of concerned because you started with that. And, and you're right, there were four objectives listed up there. Let, let me assure you, there were a lot more of that than those that were discussed. There were things like revenue su sufficiency. You asked about future needs. Obviously, we looked at that, and, and, and maybe that was a mistake on our part, not to put that up there. But to make sure you have enough revenue to pay for the capital programs that the mayor put up there. Um, was certainly one of the key objectives to make sure of that. Um, I, I guess we sort of thought, well, that's sort of an obvious, and let, let's deal with the, the, the bigger objectives that are there. The administration of it. Um, this isn't a perfect rate structure. There is absolutely nothing about this. This is perfect. Uh, there are a lot of different, somebody talked about the multifamily users. Mm -hmm. That is a big problem. What to do with multifamily users? Because they, if they have one inch or smaller meter, they're bumping into this just because they have it's, one meter. It's not a big problem if you have one rate. It's perfect. Well, you don't have to worry about it. You've created a very progressive system because that's what you were paid for, but it's not right. I wasn't paid for to do a progressive system. That's incorrect. Okay. I read the report and I read all of those words. That's what it said. Okay, what I'm telling you is it was regressive and it's now not as regressive and we use the word progressive. I'm that sorry that word caused used, confusion. That was the word you used. Okay, it caused confusion. Anyways, there were a bunch of other things. We had to look at the legality of it. Mm -hmm. Would rates be legal? And they have to be. We couldn't have a rate that charged less if you used more. That's illegal in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. In fact, most, uh, many places in Massachusetts, you have to have an increasing tier rate. Conservation is something that 
Um, I, I'm sensing there are not a lot of people here that think that a tiered rate that encourages conservation is important. And it may not be important to you um, that there is cons conservation of the water. Northampton's lucky. It does have uh, a fair amount of water and is able to do that. That's not true in a lot of towns. There's a town I'm working for right now that wants a big industry to move in, a uh, large water using industry, um, and it can't because they don't have water. Large water using industries don't just move to wherever they want. It's important that there be enough water. Northampton is fortunate that it does have enough water. However, making water takes energy, takes a lot of energy. Sending water back to a wastewater treatment plant takes a lot of energy. The amount of energy that's used in, in the production of, and distribution of water, the collection of the wastewater, the treatment of the wastewater, uh, is a very big number. I think it's something in the order of 5 or 10 percent of the Commonwealth's energy use is in water and wastewater production and treatment, that type of thing. So it's not just conserving water, it's conserving capacity in your wastewater system, it's conserving energy in it, and that gets into carbon footprints uh, and the impact of climate change that that has on it. So conservation is important, and the Commonwealth is, is pushing it, and they're redoing conservation standards um, so that if you ever want more water, if you ever got another Pepsi moved inside and wanted more water, and you wanted to big, uh, expand the wells to serve Pepsi, you would have to jump through a lot of hoops, and one of those hoops is to have a conservation rate. The flat rate that you have doesn't do that. You wouldn't be able to get the water or get Pepsi to do that. And I think everybody in the room would agree that having a Pepsi here that was as big as Coke and, and, and brought down the cost for everybody would be beneficial to everybody, including Pepsi and Coke. The, the acting head of the DPW said that more conservation wasn't possible. I've been in countries where people drink uh, less than five gallons of water a day. So it's absolutely possible. That's not true. No, I think what the DBW's director said was that there have been a lot of conservation measures implemented over the last 10 or 15 years. Right. You know, high efficiency washers, high efficiency toilets. So a lot of the low hanging fruit has been captured because of that. And they're also very say, good at calling if they see, I mean, we receive you have a call, leak, right? You excellent. Have a leak. We yeah. receive a call from the water department. If they see usage that's up yep. a certain percentage, and it may be an apartment that we don't know or a tenant that we don't know, we dispatch someone immediately. They're excellent with that. Yes. So I, I agree on the conservation yeah. piece. The city's doing a great job with that. I guess the only other thing I wanted to add was the um, the fixed fees. They're going from the dollar to the twelve dollars and the six hundred thousand dollars that's adding. Um, that was important in what we've looked at because. One of the things that, that was important was to have rates that discouraged wasteful water use. Um, we thought that was important. We agreed with the city that it was important to discourage wasteful water use, to conserve water. Um, not needlessly, but to just not waste it either uh, in doing it. And if you are going to waste it, pay more for it. Not a lot more. You're only paying like a buck and a half more, 750 gallons. Um, the problem with doing anything with conservation rates um, is it's very dependent on the weather. Because a lot of that conservation you're getting is lawn irrigation, what happens in lawn irrigation. And if the summer is a cold, wet summer, people naturally aren't going to uh, water. If it's a hot, dry summer, they're going to water despite that because they have to have green lawns uh, out there. And conservation type rates like that um, tend to make revenues very volatile. The problem with that is the water budget and the sewer budget um, are 90, 95% fixed. The debt service, the salaries, the labor, the Everything but chemicals and electricity is basically fixed um, around a, you know, a reasonable amount of water use in the entire city of Northampton. Yet only 0.5% of the revenues are fixed. That was the sort of mis mismatch we were trying to address with, the, um, with those service charges. Um, now, as the mayor said, it costs more than a dollar to send out a bill. In fact, it costs probably in the order of 4 or $5 to read your meter, prepare the bill, collect the money, post the money, you know, go through all of that type of stuff, um, just to, to get a bill out to you and collect the money. The meter itself costs money, and the meter itself is independent of the, uh, the amount of water you use. The meter itself, in terms of testing, replacing, repairing, uh, is probably another $12, $13 a quarter uh, to do the meter. And then on top of that, you have a huge amount of infrastructure out there. When I said 90% of that investment is all fixed, that infrastructure has all been bought and debt service is being paid for on that right now, whether anybody uses water or not. And there's a lot of capacity that's out there for each and every one of you and everybody outside of here um, if you use no water. And, and there's a surprising number of people that use a very little water, yet there is a capacity there 
from their meter. They take 20 gallons a minute through their meters all day long if they want. They're going to pay for it. But you can take that. And part of the reason for having the fixed cost there, that higher charge, uh, was to recover some of that. Uh, it's sort of a, we have this investment. We're ready to serve you with water when you want. We'll give you 20 gallons a minute whenever you want. Um, and But there's a cost to that, of just having that available to you. And so that was part of the reason of putting that in there, too. We're trying to get that max between, you know, we got 90% fixed costs and 0.5% and fixed revenues. And trying to certainly not make them the same, because that would be contrary to conservation. A lot of these goals and objectives are contrary <coughs> to each other. Trying to do conservation hurts revenue sufficiency. It, 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 uh, raising the fixed charges makes more uh, stable revenues, but it hurts the affordability of people. I mean, you can see that. So, I mean, it, it, it's not an easy thing. And again, this isn't perfect. You're stuck with the system, uh, a billing system you have right now. You bill quarterly. The rest of the world, the rest of the country, bills monthly for water and sewer. The notion of billing quarterly for, for water and sewer is, is really foreign. To, to the bulk of the United States um, doing that way. Nobody gets their electric, gas, uh, telephone, uh, internet bill quarterly. You get everything monthly except water and sewer. That's a unique New England thing that we do. The problem with that is it doesn't allow you to look at, at different types of rate structures. Um, seasonal rate structures is one of them. Looking at saying, how much water do you use in the winter versus the summer? And a lot of places, Southern California, New Mexico, Arizona, what they do is they look at every person's individual water bill. How much did you use in the month of January and February? And that's your tier. You used 18 in the winter, that's your tier. You used 24 in the winter, that's your tier. You used 200 in the winter, your tier. Coca-Cola used 4,000 in the winter, that's their tier. But that means every account needs to be have a good meter reading for January and February, the winter, and have a monthly reading to then say, how much over that did you use? That kind of rate structure is not possible with what you had. You probably need to spend a million dollars put in a billing system to do that. In, in Southern California, they have to because they don't have water. Again, your fortunes good. So, so we were precluded to do a lot of rate structures. The apartment thing I was mentioning, it would have been really nice to be able to say, okay, we'll count up the number of units uh, in the apartment. Okay, if you want to use the uh, number of units that are actually occupied and not vacant units, divide the consumption by the number of units, that type of thing. And it's been done in the Commonwealth. It's really difficult to do because you have to get that. Um, and you can do it. The problem is there's a lawsuit going on about that very thing. And we advise the city, don't do that at this point. Something we looked at, something we're concerned about for the very reason this person was just asking about it, who had left. Um, but we advise, don't do it. Let this lawsuit run its course. If it's found to be illegal, you haven't got a problem. If it's found to be legal, Fix it next year, the next year after that. So I mean, this isn't static. This is something where there's a lot of different ideas about how to, to make it better. It's not perfect. I wouldn't even say it's great, but it's better than what you had. I just have one last comment. Sure. Because I think there's people here are all concerned about what we're going to spend for our fire protection. Mm -hmm. The comment that I have as you look at this, because you have to balance out everything you do yep. with everybody in the city, is that we all pay an awful lot of money in property tax, and we're not putting kids through the school system. I know I don't have any kids from Pearl Street and the Calvin and the Ironworks, all the properties that we have. So the balance there for us is that that's our contribution, and no different than it was said that why are the residents paying for us to have fire protection because they're subsidizing it? Why are we paying for the things that we don't use? I would ask that you look at that and try to balance that out, because I don't think anybody here is saying the rate of Paying more money, that's why I'm not happy with the tiered system, but paying more money if it's requested in terms of what we need for the water and sewer infrastructure. But I don't feel the fire protection at that argument about, well, we're subsidizing, or the residents rather are subsidizing us, because that argument holds true if we look at what we're paying for property tax for all. And that so happens that's, to everybody. Right. Yeah, that's just exactly. a part of living in a community. That's right. Society. So I'd ask that you look yeah. to try to balance that, because yep. the biggest share as uh, Sewer was mentioning, yep. and others, that the biggest piece to this in terms of the increase, which wasn't on the on the graph or on the mm -hmm. chart, especially with the Fairfield, my properties weren't up there, but we've done all of them. Yeah. I did it with your new rate structure, but the first one. Yeah. And, and then nowhere on that chart was the fire protection. Um, and that's a significant, for, for some people, you have a four-inch line at the Fairfield. Mm -hmm. yep. And for some people, it ag adds significantly as it's a quarterly charge. Yep. And we've paid to connect to the system. 
We're paying our property taxes with regard to the hotel. He's paying, you know, there's many other taxes flowing to the city, which is a huge bonus. But I feel that the balance is there where maybe the fire protection piece we look at separately and maybe saying, you know, there's ways of us possibly burying that. There are substantial increases with our connection, with our uh, fixed fees alone, mm -hmm. besides, yeah. besides the protection. And we were forced into it. We had to do it. I'm happy that we're, it, it, we have it because yeah. it's a safer environment yeah. if there were a catastrophe for people. But it wasn't something that, you know, we, we paid a substantial amount of money for it to connect to the system. The yep. city didn't pay anything. I'd ask that you look at that in a fair way. Okay. Um, that's a that, that's 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 helpful. Thank you. Helpful feedback. Yeah. Nice um, um, I just wanted to say that uh, you know we can rest assured that the Union Station will not be conserving water because we're still going to allow the Amtrak riders to will fill up their water bottles and we'll let them use our toilets. <laughs> just wanted to just wanted to be on the record. For that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Is there, any chance, is there a chance of getting a grant? Because I know uh, Springfield should be in Boyo. All just got grants from Governor Baker to deal with the combined sewer. Yeah, yeah, we don't have that issue, so that's a special problem that they have combined sewer overflow. That's because they have their storm water and their sewer is all in the same, and it's all going oh, to the nice. Connecticut River. Yeah, we've separately. Right? Yeah, we we've, we've separate ours is so that we're not eligible for those CSO grants. We will be applying for hopefully grants to help us get better um, financing on some of these projects. That's that's sort of built into some of our assumptions. There so are, are they some fine to that? I mean, they what's that? Be, they must be getting it's a big issue. Sign, it's so. a big issue. But if we have to do this, I'm, yeah. I, I'm sympathizing with the city that because if we have to do this because the EDA or yep. whoever is saying, look, if you mess this up, we're gonna fine you X amount. Yep. And then surrounding communities are basically just Allowing, but it's a separate. It's I, a separate I, I problem. I, understand. Well, yeah, I, I guess separate. that's a separate problem. Yeah. But the state's handing out 1.25 yeah. million, and then you're going, look, yeah. I got to raise revenue. All of our sewer and, and stormwater is going to our wastewater treatment plant right. and being treated. Theirs is going into the Connecticut. Some a lot of theirs is just going right out into the Connecticut, mixed together. Should be rewarded. With it's some that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree. It's a. It's a. I mean, some of these really older historic cities, Salem, the mayor in Salem's got the same issue up there. Um, so no, that, but we do apply. We do try to apply for um, financing through um, the federal government, right. the state government, to get better loans, and we'll we'll pursue all those. We pursued grants. We I I worked with Senator Rosenberg and Representative Cocott to get some funding to help with some of the stormwater needs in the Ward Three neighborhood. So we are actively pursuing those. And again. Um, this has been great. It, I, you may not feel felt great, um, but it's been great, um, and I really appreciate this. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. And I am gonna, you know, again, I've tried to be responsive all through the process. I'm gonna sort of think this through a little bit more. Um, but just know that I'm, I'm, I stay up at night worrying about these issues, including business, including the issues affecting business. It's part of my job, and I care about it. And so. I appreciate you coming out. I appreciate the feedback, and um, and stay tuned and stay engaged in the process. Well, thank, so, you thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.